Hey, welcome everyone to the Sketch Zone podcast. It's Carlos. And uh, this week we're going to be talking to, I don't know if he is a, uh, dare I say, you remember when we used to do um, uh, Artist Inspiration? This is one yeah. of my Artist Inspirations. I don't, so I don't know if I should call him Inspiration. I can call him <laughs> Doppelganger because we Did look very much alike. <laughs> You guys, welcome to the show. Uh, finally, I can call him my friend. I've been wanting to do this for probably a couple years now. You guys, welcome to the show, Harshad Beg. Yeah. No very problem. Very happy. There we go. There we go. There we go. Welcome to the Sketch Zone Nation. It's my pleasure to be here, Carlos. And yes, indeed, you are an incredibly handsome man. Looking at you is almost like looking in the mirror, you know, almost with a little crack on it. <laughs> I'll he said you're the fugly I'll version. With a little crack on it. <laughs> of course, I'm, I'm just you. guessing. You got a little crack. I'm, I'm, I'm just joking. I love it. I love it. I'm ready. I'm so excited for this show. Hey, you guys, while we're here, we might as well go ahead and welcome Charlie B. Williams III. What's up, Nation? I'm glad to be here. We've been a little bit, but glad to see all you smiling faces, Jack Carlos, and our guests. So I'm really excited. The chat is vibrant this I week. I know. It's exciting. It's going to yes. be great. Oh, uh, Jack is here. Jack Casper, Zach. Hello, Nation. Yay. This is going to be a good one. I am excited. All right. So uh, like I said before, we used to do a part of this show where we would point out some people that we were keeping an eye on because either they were fantastic artists or animators or whatever the case. Sometimes, every once in a while, we were talking about uh, musicians and stuff like that. But for me, uh, you guys know, uh, now that I'm up there in age and I'm starting to collect the grays, uh, I'm, I'm chasing after my dream. And so I've been... Stalking might be a good word. Yeah, I'm People glad you're like... honest with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad like... we've moved out of the denial phase. Yeah, <laughs> this is a great day, Jack. <laughs> but yeah, oh, real quick, uh, before I go getting w even more sappy than I have been, welcome to the show. Welcome to the chat. Uh, there's a whole bunch of you, like Charlene Giles, uh, Swanimation. Hello, welcome. Aku the warrior, a cow. Sorry, a cow the warrior. Dylan draws is in there. Dylan draw. Uh, Life fantasy X. Welcome back, Jack Casper. Zach, something fishy. <laughs> uh, Dylan draws. Villa art. Welcome you guys. Thank you Octavio. for uh, thank welcome, you for welcome, welcome. taking time to come and hang out with us. Mary Beth, Cameron is Black, here. Uh, frilled may fly. Uh, and I think I said Charlie. Ch Charlie you're, you're, Giles, you're talking yeah. to you're talking to the animators of the future. There it is. That's right. <laughs> the animators of the future. And actually, that's a very good uh, way to come into something like this because right when, like right before we got on the show, uh, we were all talking about. Well, actually, Arshad and I were talking about, um, like, kind of leveraging technology to help you guys. Uh, that might be watching the show or that watch uh, uh, AMB animation on YouTube or uh, even my channel, Coconut Justice. Hint, if you want some really cool stuff, go check my, my personal channel. But anyway, um, uh, uh, and we've been talking about leveraging um, technology to share some of the information that we've been collecting throughout the years. And so... Um, let's talk about that because I know that, um, that's the thing that really got me into trying to follow you, which is code for stock. But, um, I love watching your, your streams and everything that you're doing on YouTube and even on, uh, on Instagram. What was it that got you into becoming in effect a YouTuber? Well, <laughs> When YouTube, when I first started doing YouTube, I just used to post animations I did in the hope of finding extra work as a freelancer, um, you know, uh, line tests, pencil tests, 
we're, we're talking, I think, 2000. I can't, really can't, can't remember how long it was ago. Um, and then I kind of like just left it at that. Uh, then I, as I was working and then sometimes I'd, I'd decide to have a bit of a play. I'd decide to like film a drawing, film myself doing a drawing like uh, in real time, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. a 10 minute drawing in real time. So almost like live before it was live. But mm -hmm. then I would like up, uh, I'd put a camcorder over my shoulder, really bad quality, um, <laughs> draw it, uh, put some music on there and put it up there. And I found that I started getting like, Back in those days, like if I got like 10,000 views, I'd be like, what do I mean back in those days? I, I struggled to get 10,000 views. <laughs> but, but, but I'd be like, wow, 10,000 views, you know, let's see if I can up the bar. Um, and people were genuinely really impressed because as animators, we draw really fast. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I think people were used to speed, speed paints and things like that, but I don't think People are used to seeing somebody doing a really strong drawing right. in the matter of a few seconds sometimes, you know, literally under a minute. Yeah. Yes, and so in, in like five minutes, it's all there. Um, so then I, then I sort of went from there on to doing like, because you had a 10-minute um, threshold. You couldn't have anything more than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, let me do an animation in 10 minutes. You know, yeah. that'll impress them. <laughs> so, so, I, so I was like, okay. So I just did this guy doing a typical, you know, in animation, you've got little little tricks, like as the head comes up, just drag it yeah. and have it yeah. set like that, yeah. then turn with an arc and then bob it at the end, and then afterwards do a hand move like that with it. And, you know, <laughs> so it's like it goes like that, and it took like me 10 minutes to do it, and that basically got me something like 50,000 views. And I was like, yes, I want to, I'm on to an absolute winner here with this. Um, uh, but then I'd be going, then juggling it with work. Mm -hmm. So it would always be on and off. So my channel was kind of growing, but it never, the consistency wasn't there. And I would come back from work and try and fit in a video. And then I started doing tutorials. Um, 10 minute tutorials of head turns and things mm -hmm. like that and yeah and then while I was working in the industry as a it's probably a storyboard artist mm -hmm. uh, for the last 10 years of my career I was a storyboard artist I was a hand-drawn animator before uh, dabbled in CG then became a storyboard artist and animation director um, and then what happened was is then I just on the side I'd keep getting these messages of people saying I learned more from this than I did in university. You know, this is great. You know, this saved my life, like this walk cycle tutorial. And they were really badly done. I would use Camtasia to record, and then I would oh, pretend yeah. I was talking live over it with the phone going, so oh, now we're doing like bigger than we can eat, you know. Like, and then I'd combine nice. the audio together. And, you know, nice. it would be like, it was live before it was live. So I'm absolutely loving this whole live business. Yeah. And, um, and basically, I kind of like got a, got a bug bug for it then, but I still kind of loved doing my industry thing because I was I was kind of climbing high, working for Universal Pictures, going off to 20th Century Fox, and then hmm. I had Tim Burton hmm. contacting me three times, his people, to work on Frank and Winnie, and I'm like, no, I don't want to do that because <laughs> I got I got a chance to direct, um, be a head of story on a 2D feature. Oh, which nice. which never actually you know it just came out once in china and that was it but yeah. but uh, yeah. but you know where, so I was where were of, you living when when you were doing the 2d animation and the story all, 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 all here in, in in the uk okay um okay. indian living with my folks um mm -hmm. then I, I married my wife 10 years ago and have been sort of like going back and forth to new zealand and okay is 2d is is 2D animation still pretty big in, in the UK? Mm, well, it depends what you call 2D. <laughs> or animation oh. in general, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, I'm one of those guys. You know, I know I know that there's 2D, but I would say 2D is huge, hmm. but not traditional. 
Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Traditional is kind of slowly coming back. Yeah. But when I was in, when I switched over to Storyboard, it was completely dead. Uh, All the big traditional houses were closing. Do you do you know Uli Meyer? You, the guy mm -hmm. Uli Meyer. Yeah, um, he's got a feature in development. Yeah, I mean, I used to work for his studio. It was one of the go-to studios. It was one of the you know most impressive. They closed down. Um, he's he hasn't closed, but he had to run it from his yeah, own. Yeah, you know, uh, and then there was. Um, uh, fashion pictures where James Baxter used to ferry back and forth and they were originally doing the Beauty and the Beast, the first Beauty and the Beast uh, no, Richard Prudhams not fashion pictures, Richard Prudhams okay. they shut down they shut down, so all the 2D guys are just dying hmm. uh, yeah. and uh, so I switched over to CG and to cut a long story short to bring it all back together, because I know I like I like to ramble, so <laughs> yeah. I'm you Keep make our job maybe. easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, what happened was, is, is I, uh, I didn't, I ended up moving into CG, um, doing uh, storyboards for CG films. I ended up doing a bit of CG, but I was, so, so, sorry, Chris, I was falling asleep at my desk. <laughs> it, it just wasn't for me. I was having to go to the toilet to take toilet <laughs> breaks and just sleep in the toilet. <laughs> You know, because I just no. couldn't, it just wasn't the same for me without the drawing. I just couldn't do it. it just, <laughs> <laughs> and and the CG guys there actually made me a supervisor there. It was like a little boutique studio. I was brought in as a junior. I sort of knew a little bit about Maya, played with it. They had me playing with the curve editor to clean up some mocap to learn the curve editor. Mm -hmm. So we had these guys with a soccer ball, kicking a soccer ball and I. After that, I was ending up out animating their animators, and they were making me, but I was still doing this at my desk. <laughs> <laughs> and the boss's office was like just there next to me. <laughs> oh, God, that's hilarious. <laughs> just just uh, bored. <laughs> yeah, just bored. And even the films, like I, I said, I worked on uh, Tales of Despero, uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and I didn't even watch Fantastic Mr. Fox until. I was uh, on a plane to New Zealand to see my wife, and I and I did it again. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like so basically, I was like, uh, do I even like this business anymore? Am I like one of those preachers who doesn't believe in God anymore, but feels he has to just go and stand at the pulpit and oh, tell yeah. everybody about? You know, that's what I was feeling like about being an animator in the industry. So then slowly, slowly, I kind of was getting back into doing these um, tutorials. And one of the day, one day I just said, you know what, I've just, I've just, I'm just going to try. I'm just hmm. going to try and see if I can just do this, if I can just make a living out of making hand-drawn animation tutorials mm -hmm. and see how it goes. Uh, it's been tough. It's been very, very tough. Yeah, uh, but but now I mean I just did my books for the last year, and let's just say I had a bit of a smile on my face so, <laughs> because I, it was great. I was telling my dad, I was telling my dad, look, dad, I can get up and go, let's draw a rabbit that looks more like a man, but call him a rabbit and make him wear pajamas and then say he does taekwondo, and that's how I make my money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And dad, because I feel like dad doing is like, that. what in the hell did yeah. I do to you? <laughs> what was I love my life again. No, let's let's talk about that conversation because um, what a lot of times we find out that when you're talking to parents about wanting to be an artist or whatever, it's fine if you want it to be your hobby, but it's not necessarily your go-to move if your parents don't fully understand or if, you know, like my parents are incredibly traditional. Like you tell them I want to be an artist and they're like, oh, what are you going to do for groceries? You know, what was that conversation like? But well, actually, did you always know you wanted to be an artist uh, when you were a kid? I, I first read Asterix books when I was six years old and I started writing my own comic books. And as long as Asterix. And I said, I want to write comics. 
Then by the age of eight, I saw Sword in the Stone. Um, oh, and I said, wonderful I'm, I'm, I'm going to be an animator for Walt Disney Pictures. Beautiful. And then I saw Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and that was it. And yeah. I'll tell you, the funny thing is, is I think I wasn't even in secondary school. I don't know what America calls secondary school. I was probably still like in what you guys call kindergarten, mm. maybe. I don't know. Uh, and I was, the teachers were having me teach the younger kids how to draw Roger Rabbit. So it's funny <laughs> that I'm all these years later now, I've got this rabbit of my own. <laughs> and I'm teaching how to draw an anime. Brilliant. That's outstanding. Yeah. And and that was one of the movies between Who Framed Roger Rabbit and um, Pete's Dragon, if you guys remember oh, that one. Don Bluth. Yeah. Don Bluth. Yes. Oh yeah, and then you mix in and then you mix in uh, Dragon's Lair and the Space oh. Ace. You know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah, yeah. But you say Pete's Dragon. That's the, the Bluth directed the animation on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's I mean that's probably why it's fantastic. And if you <laughs> haven't. No, I don't have it on DVD, but I do have it. Well, the, funny thing, the funny thing is, Carlos, a lot of these like fanboys who like hate it, hate on hating on Bluth. Um, uh, you got this little crowd that like hating on Bluth and they're worshiping Glenn Keane. I always go, I love Glenn Keane. I'm not comparing to, but I always go, read who Glenn Keane's supervising animator on Pete Dragon was, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> That was a great delivery. That was a, a definite flex. <laughs> just, just read it out loud. <laughs> sound it out. Sound it out. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah, Don Bluth was amazing. Um, he had so much personality in his animation. And again, I'm, 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 I mean, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Uh, Glenn Keane is also a beast. Oh, so, amazing. Yeah. I didn't want to, I don't want to come across like Glenn Keane is one of my heroes, but I just like, there's a lot of like, a lot of jealous former Disney animators that I know. A little mm -hmm. clique that I'm not going to go into too much about. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, but it's a I really yeah. like, to, you know, maybe they get some kind of a, uh, satisfaction out of down talking Bluth. So that's a big thing I do. Even though Bluth Bluth runs his own school, I don't I don't compete. So I tell my students they they moan about Don Bluth's course being ten thousand I've actually got somebody to go one of my students to go on the Bluth course. Huh. And he went there wearing an A and B T shirt now. Wow. <laughs> but I said, I said, you'd be mad not to. This is the last guy alive who worked on Sleeping Beauty. This yeah. is a guy who, if you look on the internet, they ask Milk Carl, Milk Carl, which of the new blood do you recommend? It's out there for people to read. He didn't mention anyone else. He mentioned Don Blue. Yeah. The guy's still alive. The guy's teaching. Yeah. And I say, if you can, if you can, like that would be like. How much would it be to have a, a year's training with Michael Jordan or oh, Roger oh. Federer or a I year's mean... training or a year's? And you, you think Bluth is like, Bluth is cheaper than CalArts. He's cheaper than all of Now, I haven't been on his course. I don't know if it's, if it's really Bluth. I don't, really don't know. But I, I'm always going to big up, big him up because I just think his, his lineage and his heritage and what he is is just amazing. Yeah. And I, I, I always make it clear. I always tell my students, like I told them to watch Travis Blaze the other day. Mm -hmm. I told, I told, I, I made one of my students online buy one of Aaron Blaze's courses because I don't. It's like when I heard you giving that rant, Carlos, about about not hiding anything from anyone. Yeah. But I don't yeah. do much character design in my library. It's pure animation. I have a bit of character. I might expand into character design, but I said, you know what? I buy a character designer. And he's a Disney director. Go and buy his, yeah. and that's literally yeah. my my uh, my mantra. Yeah, and, and, and also uh, it's great because if you've ever seen Miracle on Thirty Whatever Street, where the Santa Claus is recommending other people's store, that kind of altruism <laughs> it does it does him a favor anyway. So it's mm -hmm. like <laughs> it's kind of coming back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh that's funny. Um, and, and for those of you that maybe just found us because you're following, um, 
um, I think it was last show, uh, we were having a conversation and people in the chat were talking about how some of these instructors, online instructors, you pay for their course and they show you like 80% of it. And that's incredibly frustrating. 80% of whatever it is that you're trying to learn. And um, it's frustrating because you're seeing a lot of these art schools being closed and you're seeing um, people having to pay an exorbitant amount of money just to for the hope of finding a job and that to me is frustrating because i was one of those people mm -hmm. um and i just i just don't get it my brain doesn't work that way um you know if i if i pay for a pound and a half of chicken i want a pound and a half of chicken i don't want like you know like, I just don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me why you would do that to people, especially the people that are trying to build up the industry that you're a part of. Um, and then hopefully just that's why I appreciate uh, Arshad for, for what he does um, because he gives it to you 100%. Whether, it's, whether you want it or not, you're going to get 100%. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them don't want it. They're like, you go on too long. These tutorials are too long. And then I draw the middle finger and say, fuck you, man. Get off my channel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and that's what you, that's what you came for. You know, what, so, what, what good is having someone with a cheery personality if they're not going to teach you the one thing that you want to learn? I'd yeah. rather have someone with, you know, like a, the, the just get up and get this work done personality i'm sorry for cutting you off jack go ahead no it's okay just so just so i just to clarify what you're saying when you say like there's a lot of teachers or courses out there that offer 80 percent, are you saying that there's there's guys that are keeping information away from students purely from like kind of like they're trying to protect themselves or their job or are you talking more like they just don't tell you like the bad side or you know this side like what what's yeah. the missing 20 percent we're talking about like, it's like light work once you after after you get past the paywall and it's just not really meaty yeah good question Arshad, do you want this one or do you want me to get it uh, you you get it you get it okay uh, so I, i've got my own views on it but like uh, well, i'm gonna <laughs> yeah. yeah and i guess the I guess what I'm saying is um, I see people like Travis Blaze. I see people like Arshad. I see uh, even my channel. Like, uh, and, and, and there's a lot of collaborations that have been happening. Like, um, for example, Travis has invited me onto his channel when he's live streaming. And when he's, he, you know, last time I was on his stream, he was like, all right, I have to finish this last panel. I, you know, I have to crank on it. So as he's drawing, I'm talking over him drawing and I'm explaining to the people that are trying to learn. Look, this is what he's doing. This is what, um, what you should be looking for as a not as seasoned artist, right? So I, and I don't know. I don't know if it's on purpose. I don't know if it's a professional that's trying to teach just enough f to have you pay for the class, but yet they they don't teach you all the way because you might end up being competition. I don't know. And, and, and I think that's one of the big reasons why... Um, why it's important to get people on here and talk to, to, to get their, their, uh, their, um, their you thoughts do. on it. Right. Because I, I don't feel right. Um, just saying, be careful with a lot of the classes that are out there because they're a ripoff. I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is quite possibly what it is, is you have some professionals that forgot what it is to be a beginner. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not explained well then, basically. Like the meat's not there. 
That'd probably be a better way. And like, I think that the information... you don't feel like you're getting the full information. That's think, probably like a better way to put it. I think the information might be there. But as a beginner, and I know, I know for me, I'm speaking mm-hmm. for myself. I okay. know for me, you can give me a bunch of information for said thing. But if there's one thing that isn't addressed, my brain spins its wheels on that one thing, right? Mm. So, for example, uh, Travis again going back to Travis's live stream. I was I was talking to Travis, or I was talking to Travis's audience about what Travis was doing, and Travis is like, "I know we're gonna draw on it," and he's just nothing but magic is coming out, and I could I I was feeling like, "Holy crap, this dude is just cranking right now." And so I started telling the people that were watching, these are my thoughts. Like as a beginner, as a, as a not seasoned artist, what you're trying to do is break the information down because you know what you're looking for versus okay. someone that has done it a million right. times over. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. so I think, I think, um, I think it's important to uh, not just present the information, but mm-hmm. also take a look at um, at the presenting? level of person that is watching you. So then yeah. that way you can yeah. break it down and be like, look, and this is the, th- the this is a specific thing that happened on Travis's channel. And after after I finished talking, one of the people had commented like, Holy crap, I learned more in the last two minutes than I have, like, in however long that they've been trying to learn how to draw, right? And yeah. all he was doing was he was drawing the shapes of the of the, the big, huge, loose shapes of the body and the head and everything. And then you saw him, like, starting to break things down. Mm-hmm. He started to go into the eyes, but he didn't draw the eyes. He drew shapes for eyes. Okay, eventually the eyes are going to come in here. And okay. then, you know, he went from like super broad strokes in and he just kept refining it. And especially if you're trying to get something out the door, mm-hmm. you're probably not thinking about the best way to explain what's happening to someone who so needs a teaching that, thing, yeah. who needs that approach. And so it was it was just a wonderful uh, situation that happened because you had Travis who was focused and creating nothing but magic. And then you had a beginner taking a look and what I do. We'll call We'll, we'll call myself an intermediate. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. But you had an intermediate person who knows how to break the information down for the beginner. Okay. Right. You know what I mean? For yeah. sure. Like yeah, yeah. this is what you for need sure. to be looking for. You're not taking, gotcha. I don't take these things for granted because it's things that I'm trying to keep in mind while it's happening. These are right. the things that I'm looking for when I'm watching Arshad or Travis or okay. Aaron for that matter, because mm-hmm. Travis has been getting a little comfortable. We don't talk about Aaron that much. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, does that make sense? You think Arshad, yeah. Basically, I, I agree with you. I think that I'll, I'll put them into three categories, but I think Carlos is one is the majority. I don't think I don't think there's too many disingenuous people out there. I really don't. Right. I think right. what it is, is is there are some people who understand what they're doing and some people who just don't know how they do it. And so when it comes to the insecure artists, I feel the insecure artists are the ones who shouldn't be doing it anyway because they're probably too crap to be teaching. Quite frankly, if they're that insecure, I mean what are they doing? Like, I mean, why are they hiding anything? Right. Um, the other ones are basically um, people who are trying to do a pyramid scheme. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to show mm-hmm. you this much and then you'll pay me to get on this. Mm-hmm. We're just, you know, trying oh, wow. to do a business. <clears throat> okay. And the third one, I would say a majority is like what Carlos is talking about. And it's what real animated training is all about. I think most people don't know how to teach and specifically how to teach art well. I used to uh, instruct the martial arts 
when I was younger. Um, and I instruct so if you my talk animation. Bad about his classes, he will whip your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's impossible to talk bad about my classes, man. They're just the best. Ah, there it is. <laughs> awesome. Even if you talk bad about my classes, you'll end up taking it. You know, I've actually had that. I've had haters ending up joining my library. Okay. Yeah. You know, but like, so the thing is, is like, they don't know how they're doing it or why they're doing it. So when I do real animator training, I did basically whatever Carlos was explaining. I teach like that. I say, because drawing, I'm just going to say it, drawing is like pissing or shitting for me. It's so easy. Like I don't, like Bruce Lee used to say, don't think, feel. And like I just draw. It's I don't find it difficult. I've been doing it all my life. It's mm -hmm. simple. And I've got, yes, it's hard. If I want to do a drawing for myself that I really push myself, then I won't be on live. Mm -hmm. But for that stuff, it's easy. I don't need to think about it. I can talk, talk for England. When I'm when I'm drawing that stuff, so the way I say it is okay. If I'm going to teach someone a punch, I'll tell you why you twist at the end. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you to rotate your hip to keep it tight, mm -hmm. to keep it tight, and then at the very end to snap it mm -hmm. like that. Basically, so I teach animation the same way. Mm -hmm. Right. This is one pose. This is another pose. Mm -hmm. These are called extremes. Now we're going to create a framework. We're going to create keys within those extremes that are following an arc. Mm. Then we're going to break it down. Now we're going to do the timing. So I will do a walk cycle series. My walk cycle videos are broken up into like four one-hour videos. Mm. We'll do a one-hour yeah. lecture on the legs. We'll do a one-hour lecture on the body and the head. We'll do a one-hour lecture on the arms. And then we'll time it. Mm. So I'm basically for one hour explaining why the timing chart is drawn like this, and why it's like that, and they're supposed to follow me along as I'm doing it. And that's how I say it. it's just like martial arts, it's just like anything. Repetition. Mm. You can't lift a bicep curl once and expect the muscle to grow. You have to do it over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. But the people in the arts are just like, it's not happening for me, man. Why can't I like that? Just like slow down <laughs> a minute. Slow down. Right. Okay. This is going to take you time. And how, how, how old was you when you first started to walk? Can anyone really remember? Can anyone remember their first steps? No. Can you imagine if the baby said, I'm not walking and he's walking before me and he's walking. What a person. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, and that guy oh, over there is running. Uh, he's uh, 30. Uh, Leave him uh, alone. <laughs> 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 I want to ride the pony. You know, like, <laughs> but, 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 so that's literally what I see a lot of these guys trying to self teach themselves animation. Literally, yeah. like, ah, ah, that, that's how I see them. Yeah. I'm just like, no, you did it once. Big deal. Oh, you spent an hour on it. Oh, oh, you spent a week on it, did you? Yeah. That's nothing, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do, like, how many times have you done a bouncing ball? Oh, you've done 10 bouncing balls. Really? 10 bouncing balls is nothing. Yeah. Right. I'm just saying, God, what, do you understand how to arc? Then I right. tell people, do you even, all right, you know, you, you, you think you're too good to do a bouncing ball. Name me the 12 laws of animation. Out with it. Name me the 12 Ooh. laws. They don't even know. Oh, let me Google that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know what are you doing telling me you know about animation you know nothing yeah simple as that that's my attitude that's the martial way in martial arts if you're going to open your mouth you're going to get that and it's going to hurt yeah in animation in art they can talk big and then cry in their sleep about why they're shit yeah that's how it is so i'm like do you want to cry in your sleep have you had enough of it? Go and look in the mirror. Have a serious conversation with yourself. I will change this for you. Mm -hmm. But you have to shut up and listen to everything I say. Right. So none of that freedom of expression, man, art nonsense here. Mm -hmm. Because you either learn or you don't. Right. I want to go into and the I want to go into the chat room real quick because there's a lot of really good things happening. So a cow 
uh, says AMB built his animation lessons while simultaneously mentoring 50 students. That way yeah. he was able to create lessons and know what beginners struggled with. Yeah. Yeah, he was one of my first students. So, yeah, yeah he was. A, yeah, am I had two tiers. I had. Am this I saying thing his called, name correctly? I don't. Uh, I, I, I called. I, I called him Akal the Warrior. He was just okay. Akal, but because okay. he was a fellow martial artist like me, I would always say <laughs> Akal the Warrior, my brethren in battle. <laughs> so, he's, so he's got that Fantastic. name. Fantastic. Warrior. Man. Uh, here's another one. But, it's from uh, Frilled Mayfly. Um, a good man, a good magician never reveals their secrets might be part of the issue. Oh, this is going back to it's going back I, to I, didn't, I I just want to touch on that very quickly. Sure. Um, so I don't I don't take over the comments. Uh, I just want to touch on that. I think, you know, I, I was when I read that in the Richard Williams book, I was disappointed where he talked about the wrestling master who kept one trick to himself. The thing is, is like I don't keep mm. it. What you have to understand. It's is like, it's the same thing. Maybe it's the martial mentality that kind of then, what you have to understand is, is most people are not going to stick with it. Even people with the right intention. So the, the insecure man who thinks he's going to be beaten, it, you know, he's worrying about nothing because most people don't have the sticking power. And I say that if the person does do it, and does end up bettering you, that just makes me even more of a badass. Mm. Yeah. That's my job. I trained that guy. <laughs> That's my job. You know? It's like whatever you get, whatever you put in, it comes back to you. Right. right. So that person, however good they'll get, mm -hmm. they'll know. Yeah. They'll know. They'll give you a shout out, yeah. Even if they don't give a shout out, that doesn't mean anything to me. It's just... Yeah, that's mean? true too, yeah. Huh? You know? It's between two people. Yeah. It's like at the end of the season. Have you seen that film 1492? Uh, Conquest of Paradise about Christopher Columbus. Some other guy basically, they, they deface Columbus and they say basically some other guy discovered America. Now, I don't know the real history of who discovered it, but it's a great scene in the movie where Columbus goes and he takes him and he says, look out the window, what do you see? Uh, to the man who's taking the credit for building it all. Yeah, I see towers i see steeples i see fires that reach to the sky uh you're just a foolish dreamer and he said all of them created by people like me and mm -hmm. one thing that changed between us i did it and you did not and the thing is is basically what that scene tells me is is like the beauty of it just knowing between two people and when you've helped somebody to really succeed it's not antagonistic like that it's harmonious it's beautiful because right. that person has accomplished their dream and you have been a part of that so even if they've become greater than you you've been part of something even bigger than mm. yourself so i don't understand this mentality of i'm gonna hide this or whatever because you're just stopping your potential maybe what you have is so great that it's beyond you i mean we're all gonna die one day right mm. So like, isn't doesn't it make more sense to pass it on, so it keeps going even yeah. beyond, beyond That's you? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I th I think a lot of this goes. I mean, back in the days when all the animators were apprenticed, you know, it's like you work directly with these guys in, in hopes of at the very least matching them, but often you know far surpassing them. And I, you know, I think there's there's a huge lack of that in the industry. Um, right now there's very little very little mentorship very little training to be honest um so i think i think that kind of like exactly what you're talking about lifting lifting the next generation up lifting those train up is is almost endemic in the culture right now it's 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 kind of self-feeding yeah i think it's important i think it's i think i think it's really um i just i just think it's Nat nat natural it's nature everything right. grows it has to. right and i want to go back to some of the point or at least just one of the points that you were making earlier um as an artist beginner intermediate don't forget that people like 
Arshad and Travis and Jack and, you know, uh, Charlie and 3D. Like, don't go trying to compare yourself to someone that's been doing it for so long. They've been doing it a long time and it comes faster because because they've been doing it for a long time. You know, uh, again, they there's that saying you need to get through a thousand bad drawings to get to that first one. So start start drawing. But have enough patience for yourself. Take the time to not just draw, but learn while you're drawing. That's what's going to, once you get, once you get the mechanics down, the speed naturally comes. Don't worry about fast, worry about good. Yeah, that, that, I, I agree 100%. It's like um, fast. I mean, what is fast? I mean, I often tell people, like, I can animate a scene in basically an hour that'll that'll outclass most to be honest with you and um but to a juvenile who's probably masturbating over too much hentai he probably thinks that i've taken too long he spent an hour on it you know <laughs> he spent he spent an hour on it man that takes too long i want to be able to just knock my scene out man like the way i knocked out that over the hentai <laughs> 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 The thing is, is I've, I've got a feel for the kind of people online trying to learn animation. So, like, I've, 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 like I go, oh, okay, they're like they're, they're these characters. Like, so I've learned a lot of stuff while I've been online. I've learned about all these anime kind of people, the different pieces of anime that they're into, and and like you go onto Twitter, you'll see like a post by of a Don Bluth drawing or a post of a John Pomeroy line test getting something like twenty likes or even fifty likes. You'll see some hentai fan art spreading her legs with like 4k likes and i'm like oh, okay right so and that's where we are <laughs> so, so, so then i realized that that's the mentality of a lot of people coming onto these streams wanting to learn animation and i'm like do i want these people on my stream no so i'll, ba I'll, ba I'll, I'll, I'll bad mouth i'll make fun of them i'll run them down so they never come back <laughs> oh, i really like, I really like you. <laughs> Uh, I have so many vivid memories from teaching and trying to get people to break out of the anime style when when drawing and talking about stuff because it's something they really like. Because people just naturally gravitate. I think it might be a, a natural thing when people well, learn. It's, it's a feeling. Do, it's good. Yeah. yeah. You know, or some people who like really is into comic books will do the same thing and then like. It takes a while, but it's always nice to see when they start to come out of it and their style kind of comes, voice, yeah. comes to the surface. And then you have the other ones that, like like you said, want the quick fix or want the quick reaction. They're not as, not as good with the worth ethic or, or lacks it. You know, they kind of just stays in that and thinks that's what they need to be doing because that's the kind of job they'll get, even though they live in America and... <laughs> they're yeah. never get, they, they, they're never they think the they're going to be job. drawing. They think they're going to be drawing adult anime for for a living. You know, mm -hmm. like no, you got to do some preschool. You know, some little. <laughs> uh, uh, Welcome to the world of animation. You know, maybe you can pretend that's one of your. No, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> so is that the only thing that you have? And that sounds such. A weird way so have patience with me because i'm trying to formulate the question um, <laughs> um is online training the only thing you have happening right now or are you working on anything else any projects that you can possibly talk about well no I, last year i was working on a movie um and, and i i kind of like regretted accepting it but i partly accepted it because i wanted to use it as as a way to build up my library to say, look, and I was doing it. I was saying, look, I can walk out of the industry and I can walk right back in whenever I want <laughs> to, show, to show my students that, look, you can still be doing these hand-drawn skills and you can still go in and out. Mm -hmm. But I did kind of regret it because the few months that I was on it, it was intensive. Um, uh, but like I, I was working on that. Uh, it was a uh, streaming They'd raised the funding for theatrical release and streaming media release. Uh, but something happened, which I can't talk about. Um, something quite 
disturbing happened on the production. Um, and we were all told to wait around. Uh, some of us are still waiting for cash. Um, mm. uh, and uh, the claims to still be going on. Uh, but even if it does, even if they, uh, I mean, uh, my, my director is still kind of messaging me saying uh, that, that, you know, they might be scheduled to start or, or this. Uh, I'm not going to go back to it because, um, as I said, the freedom of doing what I'm doing now, nothing like it's going to take something really special to, to make me want to. <laughs> it's, it's like it's it's like literally like I don't know if you've still seen I'm, I'm now making my own projects. I'm making my mm -hmm. own films. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to make my own TV series. You see this rabbit in the back here that mm -hmm. he's called the ground opera, which is loosely based on grasshopper from the 70s Kung Fu. Uh, TV wow. show, um, and um, but before that, I'm playing around with my own kind of little Red Riding Hood um, mm -hmm. thing, and it's amazing because I've kind of put aside my perfectionist mentality, and I'm just animating the film, cleaning yeah. it up, painting yeah. the backgrounds, and just letting go of all the errors that I see. Like, they're, well, they're not errors, but like to me, I'm like, oh no, that's not strong enough. That's not that's not good enough. But like I've kind of let that go. But once you see it all coming together, I'm like, shit, man, this looks better than the Swan Princess. This is like me, just me in my house. Mm -hmm. And it looks better than a multi-million dollar project. And I'm thinking this is setting an example again to all the people out there who are wanting to self to train themselves. Is you can. We're living in such amazing times now. Like you can make good stuff. On your own, you don't have to worry about. Uh, you don't have to compensate on quality. I know I said I was, but still, I mean, the, the kind of thing what I'm outputting. And if you just have a small team, it'll be done just a little faster. And if we, we it's it's early days yet. You've got me. You've got Aaron Blaze. You've got Travis Blaze. You've got another guy out there, Tonico. Um, I'll sing whoever. You know, I'm not. As I said, I'm not insecure. You've got John Pomeroy, you've got the Bancroft brothers. They're all doing things online. These are early days. The quality of the hand, my dream is, is to have the hand-drawn self-taught animators fucking shit all over the industry hacks today. That's what <laughs> my To have the industry I hack, sweat, tremble, have, hear their, to have themselves feeling sick inside when they look at the work of some self-taught artist. That, that's absolutely shits all over there. They're lazy ass hack, <laughs> you know, software dependent nonsense. Because they haven't learned. They're just lazy, and they're you know they're they're just happy just churning stuff out. Um, I don't I don't wish them ill will, but it's just a little beef that I have. I always tell people, traditional. Two D animation isn't dead, folks. It's suffering a fate worse than death. The quality is all gone. Mm. Mm. Needs to come back. There's people like Sergio Pablos making Klaus and all that, which is fantastic. But again, yeah. it gets yeah. recognised because it almost looks like three D. You know, I'm not, that's not yeah. for me. I, you know, you look at the pencil tests of that film. I see them on LinkedIn. Amazing, John Pomeroy. Yeah. Um, what's that guy's name? He was a blues animator. It escapes me. Really strong animator. Um, did some of the best scenes in there. Um, but, you know, so many animators doing amazing work in there. But when when the publicity comes out about it or you see it, what are they talking about? Toon Boom gave it this look and all this mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. it's like, so I'm like, well, I'm not going to talk about Klaus then. I, I won't do that. I'll let everybody else kiss its ass. I will talk about people <laughs> who are working hard on keeping the hand-drawn thing, on yeah. bringing that hand-drawn. I always say, I don't know if I'm the kind of guy who's going to be able to help bring it back to the standards of Milk Carl and the Nine Old Men, but I definitely reckon I can bring it back to the standards of the 90s Renaissance Disney men. So I reckon, basically, if we can get hand-drawn animation uh, back to that standard, with the independents out there, we're going to have real artists back. Real artists. When I say that, I'm not saying that people in CG and all that aren't real artists. Of course mm -hmm. they're real artists. But 
back in the day, it's like saying a dentist is an artist or a or a mm. or a yeah. boxer is an artist. Of course, they're artists. They're great at what they do. Art is everything. But in the conventional sense, what do you, what do you think art is when you're a little kid? You're somebody who draws, right? Everybody draws, but no, nobody draws in animation anymore. I just think that's so sad. That is just so sad, and it ups, and, and I'm and I'm I'm just like no. I mean, yeah. this is the yeah. most this is the most beautiful. Like, there's no machine, no device in the way. Your brain to your your hand is expressing what your sub unconscious is seeing in the most direct way. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Why are we yeah. why are we putting that to one side? That's just mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. It should be celebrated. If anything, in this times with all the when we're when human beings are sort of like God creates man, man creates machine, <coughs> machine, you know, Excuse whatever, me. we need to be men again, or yeah. women, or whatever. We need to express ourselves through drawing. Mm -hmm. And if some of us prefer computers, great. But those people who draw should still have a platform to do it. And that's why I think if you have this kind of indie scene, because who doesn't like a cool drawing? Who doesn't want a cool drawing on their shirt? Who doesn't? And the people who like a cool drawing are the people who like to see those drawings move. Now, maybe yeah. that's a smaller yeah. niche. Maybe that's a smaller niche, but the internet provides for smaller niches. Exactly. And it gives these yeah. artists a platform to do their work, to realize their passion, to live like I do. Maybe not making billions or millions, but just drawing a rabbit in his pajamas and paying the bills that <laughs> makes me happy. You yeah. know, you know so it, it makes me happy. It's going to make so many people happy. And they're going, to be, they're going to be doing drawing. And that's what ultimately real animated training and what I'm doing, what drives me, really. Yeah. Apart from, yes, I want to make my own stuff as well. But if I'm going to do something, I always do it 100% or don't do it. Mr. Miyagi says, you karate do yes. You karate do no. You karate do guess so. Get squished like great. You, <laughs> you have to do it. You gotta do it, full. Gotta do it all out. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> In two hundred and five shows, this is the first time we've uh, we've gone to Mr. Miyagi for words of advice. Fantastic. It's great. And those it's, are, it's those are good. shocking, actually. I'm surprised we haven't gone earlier. Yeah, I know. Yeah, for real? Um, so there's a conversation that's kind of happening in the chat where, um, so like Moises Aguilar is there, Edge Deep. Um, they're, they're both professionals, by the way. Oh, cool. Edge, Deep, Edge Deep's a mocap artist. He's work, worked on live action movies. You know, So these are the people who come to learn from me. Yeah. So you know, they're, just... they're actually talking about um, school and uh, like going to art colleges and stuff like that. And uh, Frilled Mayfly said, honestly, what we should really be crapping on is colleges. Show people that college is stupid. Um, and then, you know, it goes on and on. And they're they're really speaking very highly of um, how you approach your teaching and everything and how open you're, you're just basically an open book. Um, does anyone want to talk about like, um, and this might be a really good, uh, conversation to have Jack take over because, um, do you think you being in the currently in the animation industry, do you think that someone needs a, degree to actually make it in the industry um, that's a heavy one it's Have the fun. age old debate uh, you know the short answer is absolutely not <laughs> the more detailed answer could get is I mean that could be a whole show in itself but um, I think the current state of most education facilities and colleges is that degree is worth very little um, I mean, pretty much everyone I work with has some kind of a degree and some of them are worth every penny of it. And some of them are like, how the hell do you even get up in the morning? Um, <laughs> you know, like, how are you existing in this world? Yeah. Um, 
it's and, and and that's not just like new people fresh out of college. I mean, I'm talking about people who've also been doing this for 20, 30 years. It's like, how are you still how do you still get jobs? Um, I mean, that that was one of the most eye opening things for me is like. I mean, I worked a long time in visual effects, which, of course, is CG and, you know, hyper realistic. And there's there's kind of that bar that you have to meet. And I'm not saying that there's not terrible people in that industry, but I mean, the, the final product, you know, it, there's a very specific bar. It either looks real or, or it doesn't. And like everybody kind of knows if it fits into the image or not. But when I s- kind of switched back to my roots and got into animation at DreamWorks, you know, I kind of went in it and I was already a professional at that point. But I kind of went in it naively thinking, hey, you know, this is a studio that's known for animation and all the people are going to be great. Right. And it's like you get in there and it's like some of the stuff that passes for daily review or is just it's shocking. It's it's shocking that, you know. I mean, you know, we've already been talking about it. Some of some of the quality has has really suffered. Um, And it's and it's not purely just. Uh, business demand. I, I think it's really easy to 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 lean on that crutch and say, you know, corporate corporate um, you know capitalism wants more products faster, cheaper. That's not. I mean, yes, sure, yeah. that that plays into it, but that's not the only thing at play here. Um, you know, there's no reason that you can't get a guy like like Travis or um, you know. I mean, literally, I mean, I, I don't know why I picked Travis, but anyway, I mean, there's there's no reason you can't get these guys in there drawing your storyboards or drawing your images. And yet uh, I've worked, I mean, I've had to fire some people, you know, it's like we get these people that turn in like post-it scribbles for like a daily review. And you're just like, not only does this not even pass the bar of, <laughs> of like, you know, professional quality presentation, this doesn't pass, like this is crap I was drawing in like fourth grade. Like I, I it's so unclear and mm-hmm. like you, like th- that's the most important thing is to be clear with what you're really? trying to say. Wow. Like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not joking. No, that's on the other spectrum. There's guys that just blow you out of the water and you're like, man, I wish I could be like that. And it's just, and you get these people like in the same position on the same show. And it's just like, it's mind blowing. So I know I'm like way off in left field now, but the point is, is, you know, some of these folks, some of these folks come from a traditional education and some of them don't. Um, and it, honestly, I don't think it has anything to do with it. It's, it's, it's how, how good you, how well you draw, how, how good your experience is with the basic principles, the fundamentals, all that stuff. I mean, I've had to explain like simple, like the 180 rule to, to like see, to seasoned directors who've been working in the industry for 15 years. Like, no, yeah, no, 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 I'm no. not, I'm not joking. This was, this director, was like kind of a, director. Director. A director. <laughs> so is that because yeah. they? So Jack, what is that? So is that because they rise to that position more as a manager than actual artists? Oh man, um, is that a loaded question? <laughs> no, I, I think it, it. Or do they I forget? They just lose it over. No, time. I think it's a varying. It, it could be a number of things. I think some of it is is you know yes maybe they got in the industry prematurely or they they kind of rose prematurely and so they they just didn't they didn't have time to settle in the in the fundamentals. I've noticed this trend a lot that people get promoted very quickly. The turnover is. I mean, look, you guys talk about it on your channels. The, the industry is kind of tumultuous and it, and it can be hard. It can be a lot of hours. It can be it can be mm. tough work. Um, it can also be great. It can be great work. But the point is, is there can be a lot of turnover. And what that does is it puts the studio in a position where they're very willing to promote people from within that are usually not qualified. Um I worked with a woman who's now directing uh, a TV show and it's only her second year in the third year in the industry. She started as a PA. Oh, wow. She started as a PA um, and then got a revisionist job and then bounced and took the first job and somehow got a director gig. And, you know, folks out there listening might be like, oh, that's awesome. I can rise really quick. And it's like, sure, if that's all you're looking for. You might have made something rise really quick. I don't know to get that job. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, there's, there's, yeah, I don't there's want to that. Bring that up, but, 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 but that happens. I, you know, it does. We, we've all been in the industry. We know that. Happens. Yeah, it does. 
it's 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 a thing that you know everybody jokes about it and kind of but it, it does happen and and even not and, and not necessarily in such like that classical sort of sinister way like i'm gonna do this favor for you if you sometimes it's purely oh, just yeah, like yeah they, 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 they develop reference. a full-on relationship good That's old what yeah I, good old-fashioned um, relationships or good old fashioned, just like nepotism. It's like you're good yeah. friends with this person and yeah. you bring them along because you like them, not because they're actually qualified for the job. Yeah. Um, so, like, I know we're like so far off from the original question, but. Um, <laughs> but it fits. Does a degree matter? It fits. Yeah. No. Look, when I'm looking through resumes, that's kind of the last thing I look at, honestly. You don't even need to include it. Like, if. I want to I want to know what maybe a couple of projects you've worked on and I want to see your reel. I want to see your work. I mean, those are the two things that matter. And then I get you in the room and if you're either cool or you're not <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, there it is. that's yeah. really what it comes that's down to. Kind of, they're working like how you are. Yeah. So, I mean, we've done this a million times on this show. I, I think college is very beneficial to a lot of people that need that structure, that need that kind of repetition that need that. But, for a lot of people, it's not. And for a lot of people, I would flat out say it's basically a scam. So, Yeah, I, th I think that the only benefits it has is the networking thing. That's it. Yeah, That's the only benefit it has. I, th I think, you know, one of the things that I will say about the business, um, I, I always tell this to my students, and I use myself as an example. With the skills I have, I could be I, I I could I could have been a contender, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I already have done a fair amount. I've I've achieved a lot, but I was the kind of guy that would like to sit on my own, wear my long dark trench coat. Then the Matrix came out, so I had a wardrobe change. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but I would sit in the dark in the corner, not speak to anybody, thinking I was that man who just liked to draw, and the drawing did the talking. And I had so many friends going, why don't you go to the pub? Just play the game a little bit. Why don't you smile? Why don't you talk to people? Mm -hmm. To be honest, I was a bit of an arrogant son of a bitch. You know, I'm like, they can't roll. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, whatever. But the thing is, is if you don't network, you don't mingle, you don't even do a little bit of ass kissing, which is there's a great book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Maybe I read it a little bit too late in life, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but, but, you know, I only started reading those books when I started my business. I was like, oh yeah, so so they were right. I should have played the game, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But like basically, yeah, a lot of people make it in the industry who are really really average. You know, yeah. all eyes are on the big names, the Glenn Keens, the Andreas Dejars, and all that, but. Hundreds of people are on these movies, you know, hundreds of people work on these movies and a lot of them are really, really average. But you know what? They're good team players and they deserve mm -hmm. those jobs mm -hmm. because they know because what I've learned is, is it's about not being an arrogant snob <laughs> sitting in the corner and expecting everybody to crowd around your line, line test and do this to you, you know which is what used to happen or what I used to think. You know, basically, you yeah. know, the, the reality of it is, is everybody's a team player and everybody should be making you feel good and positive on that production so you can get it done. Yeah. And that's, yeah. and I think the one thing that perhaps college has, and I, I always play devil's cab because I don't even, I trash talk college all the time. I trash talk it all the time. But the one thing I tell my students is just be aware that if you're a social misfit and you're teaching yourself on the internet, you've got to, if you want a job, if you want to get into the industry and not be an independent, or even if you want to do a little bit of business on your own, you have to understand and you have to have people skills mm -hmm. and you have yeah. to, and yeah. I think yeah. college, yeah. college does that. It does, yeah, yeah, it does. And I, I think people forget that that animation, at least in the industry, obviously you're working on your own films and, and that's that's great. That's that's a form of of the art and it, it's certainly viable. But if you're planning on g going to a studio or working on a project, it's a collaborative art. It is 
it is by definition a team venture. Therefore, you have to be able to work with other people. And it's people people think that just being a great artist is is going to get you all the way through, and it just doesn't. Because I've I obviously I can't name names or projects, but I mean I just got off of a project where this artist is incredible. And actually he's, he's got a big social media presence. Probably some of you maybe even follow him. Great hand, great eye, like just brilliant artist. but he's like one of the weirdest kind of creepiest people I've ever worked with. And like, we've, we had like HR issues, like people were uncomfortable around this person. And like, it just became a problem, you know? And it's, it's like when you're trying to drive this engine forward and like you said, get the project done, you all have to be able to push each other forward. And being a good artist is not the only, you know, the only part of this, of this project. Yeah. And there's a lot of egos. Like I, I, what goes around comes around because as I was talking about that project where I turned Tim Burton, Frank and Weenie down, um, I was, um, sort of like the head of story and the main character designer and you had like 50 year old animation artists coming to me and I was think I was like 30 something maybe 30 not even yeah maybe about 31 time they're coming to me and they're having to show their work to me and I'm putting the paper over it and they're like basically fuming I can feel the vibes they don't want to <laughs> they, they hate me because I'm so much younger than them and like literally it was quite embarrassing because my boss is like this um, really sort of tall, um, stern guy with a mustache. He goes, he goes, Oi, if this was a if this was a big Disney production, he would have an office and you'd be scheduled to speak to him. So either give him some respect or there's the door. And oh, I was wow. like, I was so <laughs> like, because I, I, I talk hard and all this, but like in that situation, that was my first real kind of supervising role and I was nervous and um, uh, when I, when these guys were not listening to me I, I wasn't handling it properly mm. I was basically like just kind of like okay right <laughs> I'll do this then you can go and maybe and like so my boss was like and that's where I started like started to get a little bit of kind of what you do as a director I sort of learned about how to manage people a little bit more on that project because it's 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 so it's it's difficult uh, yeah, when you yeah. don't have team players it's difficult yeah and similarly that kind of blends into this conversation that's happening in the in the chat room where uh frilled mayfly is talking about being that person in college where <clears throat> they uh don't necessarily want to or feel comfortable uh connecting with people and networking and doing that um and and that's pretty normal especially for artists because um generally speaking artists are introverted they want to draw and they want to you know keep it to themselves and when it's done i'll let you sh i'll let you see it but not until i feel comfortable with it right so naturally the artist is an introvert um especially when they're doing their art uh and then when you go out into the world um you know obviously that's where that introvert I know I'm the opposite. Like if I'm in my office, I need to be, I, I, I love to be alone. I love to don't interrupt me. I'm trying to find my groove. I'm all that good stuff outside the office. You can't shut me up. Um, so that part is, is the introverted part is very natural. Excuse me. But the thing is to help, uh, uh, frilled mayfly, uh, the thing is, especially say you go to an art conference or, you know, uh, uh, local I'm media, remember, whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to remember some of the ones that are happening down in, uh, in LA, um, like CD, CTN and, CTN, 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 and Lightbox, Lightbox yeah. and all that stuff. The cool thing about that is pretty much everyone there is feeling the same way you do. Um, you're amongst your people so 
college is kind of like a collection of whoever wants to show up. You know, you might have scientists, you might have mathematicians and lawyers and all that stuff. Um, and, and if you go to the same kind of school that we did, uh, you might have people that might not even, they're probably not supposed to be there is <laughs> a soft way to kind of say that, you know what I mean? And so <laughs> it makes sense. But like when you find your, your passionate bunch, um, hopefully this, this podcast will prove to be one of those things where, uh, uh, we understand you. We understand what you're going through. We, we're we like that. Um, and so that's where uh, you having to find a way to come out of your shell just a little bit. And then that way you can do then uh, do the networking part. And networking is not a bad word. Don't ever think that networking is a bad word. <laughs> Networking. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Mother like networker. <laughs> I'm going to do a networking evening. I'm going to meet lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, uh, adding to what Carlos said there, and I know Frill Mayfly, like, Frill Mayfly is a library member, and she left her degree because she felt that the library was teaching her more, but I think her parents wanted her to go on to a degree so she's now gone to another course but i think i'm i'm the biggest person and i always say i'll throw my hands up if i'm wrong i'm wrong i, I believe passionately in what i'm saying i'll talk about it as if it's the greatest truth on earth but if somebody told me why it was bullshit i would be like i see okay it's bullshit. <laughs> you know so like you know i'm, I'm the biggest person mm. so that's why i told that little story about myself being like this because as a young guy, you think it's cool. He never talked to anybody. He sat in his corner mm -hmm. while the other kids moved in slow motion, drinking and laughing. He drew his picture. He was a badass. You know, it's cool, but it's shit. That's not how you get through in life. It's like a juvenile fantasy. Like, the fact of the matter is, is you've got to come out of your comfort zone. You've got to talk yeah. to people. You've got, you know, yeah. sometimes doing what doesn't feel good is necessary because yeah. if you're in the comfort zone somebody once said the comfort zone is the most dangerous place to be mm -hmm. it's almost like you found a comfy couch or a bed you're lying in it and then when you wake up you realize you're a spirit looking down at a bag of bones because you haven't gone anywhere or done anything with your life because it's you've been too comfortable and if you would have just gone out of that comfort zone and just done a few of those things that are a little bit frightening a little bit uncomfortable Perhaps, you know, nobody's asking you to pose for a magazine or anything like that, uh, a questionable magazine. This is something that you want to do, and you're going to be working with people in the field that you want to do. And perhaps mm -hmm. you need to experience that. It's important to say, right, this is a bad habit pattern I've got in my head. Mm -hmm. I need to break mm -hmm. it, and I need to form a new habit pattern. Right. Um, right. And yeah, I mean, now, like, pe people can't believe when I describe my previous self to them. They can't believe I'm like, because they think he's such a fun, go fun loving guy. He's talking, having lots of fun with people. He's really social. Like, I was the most anti social person. Like, eight, six, meeting my wife probably had a lot to do with, with my transformation. But I mean, I was a very, 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 you know, not a, I, I, I can't say, not, probably not a very nice person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and meeting other people uh yeah. if you meet a bunch of people and they're all calling you bad names it's time to take a look at <laughs> it's time to take a look at yourself yeah <laughs> and that's how i became the super villain <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> Where do you see, I, I, here, let me start like this. Ever since COVID-19 hit, we're starting to see less productions, less, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, live action productions. Mm. And 
it seems like Netflix is really pushing a lot of dough towards animation. Um, where do you see the future of 2D animation specifically? Where do you see to the, the future of 2D animation? Is it, do you, well, let me stop there. I'm not gonna, I'm not leading you anymore. Where do you see the future of 2D animation going? Well, I, I'm gonna answer this question in two ways because I'm the kind of person, and um, I believe a lot in like uh, James Allen as a man thinker, whatever you think you become. So I don't like to entertain bad thoughts, okay? So I'm going to I'm going to first see where keep it in line to what I believe and what I'm doing mm -hmm. is to where I believe it. And then I'm going to give you the answer that you're kind of wanting from me is looking at the current state. What do I see is happening with the current state mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where where I where I. Some would say would like to see it going, but where I believe it'll go, because that's where I would like to see it go and whatever you believe. You believe strong enough i believe it happens um i believe that uh hand-drawn animation uh, everything wor works in circles basically i tell this to my students animation used to be special mm -hmm. when i was a kid um you tell people you're an animator they're like wow even if you tell a woman you're an animator some of my friends seriously i'm not going to mention any names big names Tell, go out on the town telling women they were animators, they'd get laid. Mm. Um, wow, he, he's, he's an animator. Like, Because in the 90s, that hand-drawn animation was huge. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, some little crazy Eddie's video to keep the kids quiet with a cheap Disney sequel. It was big in the cinema. Right. And oh. it was about something special, something raw, something real. Now, in a world, it's like we're living in a Hans Christian Andersen world where the nightingale has become, the, the robotic nightingale has become more special than the actual animator. And I tell this, it's people like Chris, and they need to be careful because while they're genuinely skilled people, when they're working on a machine, which is the industry and the market is constantly looking to cut the worker down mm -hmm. and to make it more automated, more automated. And I said this even before, way, way before iPhone 11, iPhone whatever, I said sooner or later they're going to make little kind of things where a five-year-old would be able to hold his phone to the face and create a perfect Pixar quality animation. Mm. And there's going to be no, they're going to go, Tom Cruise, the sly old fox. He might be a hunk, <laughs> but he's still got it. You know, he doesn't, he's just Tom Cruise acting in a body suit, like no body suit, no green screen. And there you've got a Pixar performance coming out of it. Mm -hmm. Where does that leave the animator? Where does that leave the animator? They're just auto, they're, they're not even, it's like I tell people, you used to have people serving you in a supermarket. Now you serve yourself. Mm-hmm. So animation is not special. Anyone, anybody will be able to do it. And so I always said, where I, why I, why I'm pushing the real animator training thing is, is like, everyone loves a home cooked meal. Everyone, nobody makes it like mom. That was handmade. Yeah. That was yeah. by my hand, by the human hand. Humanity are going to be looking back. The, all the auto-tuned singers, the Justin Bieber's, the whatever, the singers, whatever industry, it's going to come back to mm -hmm. real, real talent. So that's why I say, like, even people in CG, like Chris or people, if they're offering something that that is human within the mm -hmm. realms of what they're doing, they're going to be fine. But if you're just, like, just building silly puppets and just thinking that that's enough, then you've got nothing. Mm -hmm. You have absolutely nothing. There will be no animator. Mm -hmm. They'll, you know, or whatever. So where I see 2D animation is I see it's beautiful. I see 2D animation being 2D again, like hand-drawn, being in the hands of real artists who actually love it, mm -hmm. creating it for people who actually love it. A new audience. Like, you know, you have... I always tell people, okay, let Pixar... Let, let CG Pixar all that cater for the kiddies. 
I'll have hand drawn be more sophisticated. We'll be all gathering in galleries going, ooh, <laughs> looking at shit. <laughs> no, no, looking no. at people's hard drives. <laughs> but, 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 you know, but basically, like, you're going to have smaller audiences, but it's going to have be a greater realm of expression. That's where, where I see it go, where I would like, where I believe it'll go. But in terms of just to answer what you're talking about now, COVID-19, post and all that, the immediate future, look, I know James Baxter is the head of animation at Netflix, but that doesn't mean everything he says it goes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the guy's an amazingly awesome animator, arguably the best in the world, uh, or one of the best in the world, um, but that doesn't mean that everything Netflix is going to make. I think it's going to be a lot of shit, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I think basically they're looking for content. They don't care about the animation. When I, when, no, I, I shut myself away because it depresses me. My students showed me this thing with this really badly drawn guy with a horse's head called RP Horseman or something. And I just, I just, <laughs> wanted, to go, I just wanted to go and like break. Yeah. I haven't broken a brick in years and I'd probably break my hand because you need to condition yourself for, for a month. Uh, with something called heavy, but I wanted to go and break something when I saw that. Because <laughs> I said, I said, that is the kind of drawing in the industry today. I spoke to people who who had stammers in their voices, who worked with Richard Williams because they because they were so afraid of what he'd think of their scenes, and they had nervous breakdown from mm -hmm. Roger Rabbit. When I came out to work on Eight Crazy Nights, there's this really sweet guy who had a stammer. And he told me, do, 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 do you know what, 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 why I talk like this? And I, I, I thought, why? He said, oh, but, but, because Richard Williams, working for that man, screwed me up. <laughs> wow. That was it. That, he cared so much about his artwork that he had a nervous breakdown. Oh he cared God. so much about what Richard Williams thought that he had a nervous breakdown. Wow. And I just, I just wanted to give the guy a hug, even as that arrogant, dark man. I just felt so sad. Yeah. I, I also thought it was beautiful. I mean, it's not beautiful that he had a nervous breakdown, but there's somebody who should be in the industry. Yeah. Now you've got some shitty little horse moving its mouth. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the world we live in now. These are the, and, and Ricky and Morty, like I have people on my screens, draw Ricky and Morty. I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> like, this is real animated training, baby. You want to see something like that? Go to go to some half good-looking girl running a YouTube channel, getting views for that. Saying, "I do drawing," you know. Go to her. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not what you're going to get here, quite frankly. Uh, so, I just think Ricky and Morty, Adventure Time. Somebody said to me, "Oh, James Baxter animated on Steve. Is it Steven Universe or something?" I said, look, mm -hmm. that show looks so shit. I don't care who animated on it. It all looks like fucking shit. You can't polish a turret. I wouldn't know. If you told me that was James Baxter, I wouldn't know. Sure, I'm looking at this stuff, but I wouldn't know. I'm sorry. I wouldn't know. The show is just primitively designed. It's poorly drawn. There's no, there's no room for good shape choices. They'll say, well, you're not skilled enough to do that. No, don't make excuses. It's just shit. That's the way I see it. It's just, just, just absolute subpar shit it's like all the good people have to apologize for being good to bring the shit people up that's the kind of topsy to topsy turvy here's the world we live in it's like basically like no i'm not gonna play that line yes i'll do this to james back but i'm not gonna know to oh james back okay i think i couldn't tell because so these kind of shows that that they just care about they, go, they hide behind the rhetoric of, it's great writing, man. It's great writing. It's all in the script, man. So they just they don't care about the quality. So where do I see it going? I see them just approving a load of scripts that they think are is great writing, man, and more of the same. Just more of the same cut out rigged in this intermediate period uh, where they're going to be automating it more and more, making less and less of the animators. Mm. And so that's where I see it at the moment, but it'll transition. Yeah, It'll transition yeah. as as I'm cooking up, not just me, but obviously we're talking to me, so I'm going to talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what Travis, we're here for. Travis, good. <laughs> those other guys, they're cooking up some amazing people, doing some amazing work, um, and everybody's out there learning what they can. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's okay. 
it's just an intermediate phase. It's like a growth spurt, you know, yeah. like the, the the seasons of the year. So animation's in autumn at the moment. It's kind of like a dead season where all the best artists are kind of falling off the trees, getting old and dying now, you know, mm. and, you know, but they're going returning to the soil like me and bringing up the sprouts of the yeah. new yeah. guys. Always bring out the good stuff again. That's that's how I see it. Do you? And and this question is for everyone. Uh, and you know, obviously, we can let you catch catch your breath. But um, do you with what just has been said? Um, how can we say it without animation seems like we've stepped away from the traditional way of doing things for a more efficient way of doing things. Do you guys think that storytelling has also, um, suffered because of efficiency or, or in the pursuit of efficiency or, do we see storytelling being improved because of things like uh, Netflix series or um, or like TV is, in my opinion, TV has been killing it. Uh, movies have moved into like as many explosions as we can possibly have. And let's throw up some superheroes. And, and um, that's why... It, that's why some movies don't make sense to folks because it's more story driven and not superhero driven. Um, do you guys think that telling a story is suffering currently suffering or do you think it's getting better? I'll let the other guys and then I've, I've done a lot of talking. I've got, a, I could talk for miles about this, but I'll, mm -hmm. I'll give the other guys. A chance. I think it, I think it depends on, on, on your preference. Um, in some aspects, I think storytelling in movies has, has gotten uh, it's gotten better. In some cases, there's always those crap movies, <laughs> and I think we have good rating systems out there now. Not like official rating system, but the ratings based on public opinion, where you can kind of like know right away if it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes based on genres. I think a lot of times when you talk about superhero movies or you talk about some of the movies that are hit right now, um, to each its own in terms of if they like them or not, but a lot of times, some of those foundations of let's say let's let's take the comic book movies and stuff like that are a lot of people's foundations in terms of like they grew up liking comics if they grew up liking these intrinsic, like fantastical storylines and stuff like that that are they're kind of crazy and it's kind of cool to try to see them try to make sense of it in a movie, um, and you got like what I like to call the deeper movies like your um, that that have gotten a lot better with those with those type of stories um, from animation standpoint. From the animated movies and stuff like that, you know, it, I can I can agree it can be hit or miss. You know, in my opinion, I don't think you see a lot of the good good animated movies. I think we saw a lot saw a lot more of those in the indie space. A lot better short films, short films and stuff that's come up and stuff like that. A lot of a lot uh, culturally relevant st stories and stuff like that mm -hmm. that have been really good. It's been thought provoking. I could think of like. Um, uh, the hair movie that came out last year that that that, that garnered a lot of praise and stuff oh, like yeah, that. That's a good one. That was really good. Um, stuff like that has come up a lot better, a lot more lately, in the last two, last four or five years than I can say big feature films, which is I think tugged at the heartstrings of, of 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 the world a lot better than than the big budget films, you know. Which I think is good because that goes back to that indie market we talked about, or that like, you know, small team to make something amazing, you know. That's the thing. Jack, you want to jump in? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's kind of a tough question because, I, I yeah. mean, I think um, I think to some degree it's subjective and, and there's right. there's there's sectors of the industry that are that are killing it. And there's other areas that are just fumbling. And, and you know, and, and this is certainly not a new question. I mean, I think there, look, there's plenty of there's plenty of beautiful 2d animation movies that were just terrible movies um i think you know dare i say quest for camelot or black cauldron or 
I like Black Cauldron, but Quest for Camelot that was that had shit animation anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Point being is, you know, I think... Um, can I say this real can... quick? I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, Arshad, please don't ever go to my YouTube channel. Ever. <laughs> All right, Jack, no, I've go ahead. Your stuff. I've seen well, your it's stuff. too late I now, Charles. Good job. But I, I, get, I get you. I totally understand what you're about. Yeah. Especially when you were talking about giving, showing people how to use the tool. Yeah. So, yeah, no. Quest for Camelot. Yeah, <laughs> that was made in that was made in England. I knew a lot of the hacks that worked on. That. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, th I think, but I think Carlos, your original point is kind of important. I mean, I think right right now there's a heavy focus on story uh, scripts, um, just purely because the demand for content is so high. So I think I think the bar for quality of production, either in live action. This goes really kind of for all content, both live action and animation. The bar for quality is not terribly high right now um, because I think it's it's purely just they want quantity. Um, and writing is just naturally a faster process than animating. So, you know, it's 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 easier to have a better script than it is to have better animation. So um, I don't know. That, I don't know that it's suffering. I think there's certain still certainly areas of the industry that are pushing it. I mean, I, I think, I thought, I think Klaus was great. I agree. I think that the praise it got was maybe for the wrong reasons. And they, they hyped up the tech and, you know, kind of the things they did, but I think the heart was there. And I, and I think it is, it's an achievement of 2d animation. And I think there, there's stuff coming in the pipe that's going to be equally as good, if not better. Hmm. Um, and I, I think it is. It's it's a great playground right now. But I think I think really the question kind of goes more. It's that old that age old question of like, are you trying to please the masses and just do something that everybody's going to like? Well, yeah, then your quality overall is going to be a little more like mm -hmm. even you're just going for something that is kind of a spectacle that people are going to have fun watching. It's not particularly good or well produced. Um, or are you going for that more art, art house thing where you're really focused on craft and, you know, experimenting and, um, and sure there's crossover both ways, but, um, I don't know. I, I know I didn't really answer the question cause I, I think it's kind of, it's kind of in a state that it's in a way always been, um, perhaps just exaggerated more now because there is more content in a, in a internet to access it all over the world. Uh, to, to to come clean, I was ambiguously fishing, um, but I mean, I do genuinely uh, think about that a lot. Go ahead, Arshad. I, I, I think it's a loaded question because ultimately, animation is a form of filmmaking, and um, I'm not going to focus on this side of it. I think because it's about your taste and your political stance, really, mm -hmm. and so there's no right or wrong in that. Like the woke people are going to love the storytelling of today, you know. I mean that they they've gone and you know uh, they've that what they've done gone and tr experimented with what they do with Star Wars it caused a lot of that created a lot of fuss but there's a certain kind of storytelling agenda in mainstream cinema that's dominating every medium live action animation um, and I'm just going to leave it at that because I think that's a that, that that's a that's a political thing and you know I think personally from from just a standpoint. I think it's sad that we don't have a, a variety, a spectrum anymore. Mm. But in terms of animation, um, from the technical side, I think it's even when CG came on the scene, it started to go downhill. And I'll tell you why. Mm. Because CG, to do a budget, you can't do certain things in it that you could just draw. So when I would storyboard on a CG show, they'd say, no, we, you, can't, you can't get the camera right down there because we can't render it that way. It, we don't have the budget to render the, the blades of grass. So when they got really small, I had this like Land of the Giants 1950s vibe going on with the angles, really playing with it. No, you can't put the camera there. We can't render it. No, you can't do that because it'll take too much time. We, we need to reuse these, these, these assets. We need to do that. So... So already from that point of view, I was limited as a story as a storyboard artist. I was limited with what I could do. Maybe not on the feature, maybe not on a, on, a, on on the big feature, but on the TV, I was limited with what I could do. Uh, so I felt and and you know, let's not even talk about cuts out. Let's not even talk about 
the limitations of what what you're going to do, like in a character moving depth of field. That really is 2D. Yeah. You know, traditional yeah. animation goes beyond all dimension as far as I'm sorry if I'm just some traditional animation preacher. Oh, you're good. That was beyond all oh, dimension. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're good. You know, yeah. it's, it's this is the place to let it go. You can do whatever you want in it. You're, you're free. But like what I've always had a beef again with the with the mainstream doctrine about storytelling and animation. I'm I'm so thankful. I mean, I'm not going to be like one of these people like back in my day, everything was good. These kids don't care. These youngsters, they don't listen to that. I'm not. I'm not like the thing is. I grew up in a magical time, where really experimentation was happening. Mm -hmm. You know, Ralph Bakshi, Lord of the Rings. Say what you will about it. Um, you had a movie for kids with Boromir. I can remember being a little kid pulling arrows out of him, bloodied, and then like the orcs coming towards him cautiously and him going, and them all running back from him like that. Yeah. And like as a little yeah. kid, I was scared, but I was like, oh, that's <laughs> yeah. badass. You know? Yeah. At the same time, we had this show Thundercats where oh, you had this you had this corpse rising out of this bubbling thing and all you could do was hear this thing going, Mom, <laughs> and you could see this Egyptian statue of this guy with its eye and going, ah, 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 Mom, Raleigh. repeatedly <laughs> like a psychopath with this pyramid in the head. And, going, ah, 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 ah. and I, I was just like, yeah, it's making my hair stand on it. And I'm creeped out, but I'm loving it. And I, when I'm working in the industry, they're going, oh, remember, this is for children. I'm like, are you mad? I mean, are we going to patronize them like that? Really? So I I think personally, and I, I actually wrote a message to Aaron Blaze before he started his YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I just became a LinkedIn contact with him. I don't talk to him at all now. I don't even know if he knows I exist. But I, I, I've got a lot of respect for him. And I wrote a message saying, thank you for the work you did inspiring me when I was a kid. Um, and... Uh, Thank you for Brother Bear. And oh. Brother Bear was one of the later films. But I'll tell yeah. you what I love about Brother Bear. And I tell this about a lot of Disney films that people don't understand. They think they buy this agenda, this political agenda that Disney is all happy family, sunshine and roses, or, you know, uh, um, fake happiness for the kids. You know, friendly and real life isn't like that. I say, let's break Brother Bear down. Man kills boy's mum. Man becomes boy's best friend only to tell him at the end of the movie, sorry, kid, I killed your mom. <laughs> That's the movie. Yes, uh, Lion King That's was a little movie. bit <laughs> along no, those no, same no, lines. No, no. You know, basically... Surprise, I killed then, your mom. <laughs> and then you have, like, Hunchback of Notre Dame, the guy, these are all 90s movies, the guy's grabbing the woman's hair and smelling her hair, and he goes, he goes what are you imagining? I'm imagining a rope around you. But no, I know what you was imagining. That's what she said to it. And the lyrics, the lyrics of Pocahontas, like um, savages, savages, dirty, shrieking devils. You know, we yeah. must sound the... In Aladdin, they actually changed the, the lyrics where it goes, oh, oh, I come from a land in a faraway place where the caravan cabals roam, where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. Now it's, well, it's hot and immense and the heat is intense. Oh, please. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, these movies, Bambi, <coughs> kill the mum. Snow White, all the hands on the trees are like raping this girl as she's running, tearing her dress. There's so much death and drama in Disney. But people even, don't watch these films. They listen to the media shit about, oh, it's all cutesy animals and all that. No, have you actually seen the film? Have you actually seen the fight in Bambi between the two stags? No. Have you seen yeah. that? Have you seen Night on Bald Mountain? The, 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 and then you've got these anime fans going, there's not enough tits and not enough guns. <laughs> you know, that's what makes the movie. <laughs> and you go, that's what makes a movie adult, isn't it? You need your boots. <laughs> it's just like, basically like, it's like, grow up, man. This is way more adult than any of that. I love Ghost in the Shell, but if you do, the woman doesn't have to show her boobs to get invisible. Come on, man. That doesn't make it adult. What makes it adult is the whole puppet master and the politics. Yeah. You know, 
But you know, the, the thing is, it's like these people don't watch these movies. They don't know how dark they are. It's like they really don't understand how hard it is to tell a story, to walk the line between family, child, and mature adult. And Walt Disney did hated repeating himself. I don't know if you guys know about the history, but he made this cartoon called The Three Little Pigs, which was actually about the Great Depression hmm. and blow, blow, blow your house down and all that. Hmm. And that made the studio a lot of money. And the execs kept saying, more pigs, more pigs. And Disney said, no, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to make this Snow White movie. Everybody called it Disney's folly. Hmm. They didn't believe in it. They thought, who's going to watch a bunch of... A, an hour-long cartoon. Who's going to watch this stuff? But he believed in it. Then he said, that's done now. That's done. Now I'm going to make a cartoon about Pinocchio, where they take children away and give them cigarettes and beer. Yeah. And then and Pinocchio you know, they legit become, got hooked on they, drugs course, and turned into jackass. a donkey. <laughs> yeah. That dark scene, I've been double grad, I've been double grad. <laughs> and he's like, you see the shadow going like that. That is so dark. Yeah. It's that so is, dark. And, yeah. The acting yeah. of Jiminy Cricket is not bettered where he's taking his jacket off to fight the kid. You're young, hoodlum, and throwing it down and trying to punch <laughs> that's, you know, that kind of acting is, you know, that's real, man. That character's alive. That's the illusion of life. Yeah. Then you go, all right, we've done that. It didn't make any money, but so what? So what are you going to do? Another fairy tale? No, we're going to do a load of classical music and a load of scenes of animation with classical music and call it Fantasia. That was Another Disney. Great film. That was Disney. Basically, like I'm going to keep telling it differently. In the end, when he had to kowtow to the studios and make other fairy tales, he got bored with animation and started doing Disney World. When they when they told him to just do the usual Hollywood line of just repeating sequels. To him, Cinderella was a sequel. To him, a mm. Sleeping Beauty was a sequel because he didn't want to do those princess stories anymore. Mm -hmm. Basically, but, but then he said, all right, how can we make Sleeping Beauty different? I mean, everybody loves the art now. I mean, Samurai Jack really simplified it all. But like even Duro, he said, we'll make it look like pagan art. We'll make it look like pagan art. Milk Carl goes jealous of even all. He didn't like it. Why should we listen to this young kid coming into the up? It was basically that. But Disney's like, no, you're going to listen to him because this film's going to look different. He just wanted it to be different. Mm -hmm. Now we're living in some kind of bizarre world where all of that stuff is considered childish nonsense and happy, clappy fairy tales mm -hmm. because we're told it's that and nobody's watched it. I mean, so many of these young students... I think it's my damned responsibility to make them watch those films yeah. so they understand yeah. why the quality is not just better than... I love the 90s movies, but I'm sorry. My brother met Andreas Deja, and Andreas Deja said we were nothing to those guys. And we were young at the time, and we are like, no, the 90s stuff's better. But now I'm an old fart now. I look back, I go, no, I love Glenn. I love all those guys. Sorry. Those old movies are just like, for me... <laughs> In terms of animation, untouchable. And I, it's, it's, my, it's my responsibility. It's the amount of people like Thrilled Mayfly, maybe not her, but a lot of youngsters who are joining my library that haven't seen these films, that don't know about these films. And maybe they've grown up buying the spiel of it's all just happy, joy, happy, 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 joy, joy, joy. Mm. And so without turning it into an opinion, because I've got my own opinion, which is I think movies today are just insincere jokes. We get no real exploration of character or whatever mm -hmm. animation is not seen as that because I think CG, now when, when in our day we had X-Men as the drawing. By the way, I can only buy the X-Men as a drawing. I mean, a, a yellow guy with blue underwear, sorry. I can only see <laughs> my belief when he's a drawing. When it's a man, when I see a man like that, I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm not going to believe that, you know. <laughs> So, like, I'll take the drawing over the live action any day. But I think most people are going to take the live action because they're wired that way. So now they've kind of said, well, the CG will do all the, the drama and all of that. Mm -hmm. And they've left 2D to be these kind of, like, silly, wacky shapes going, uh, 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 or whatever. You yeah. know, it's, yeah. it's like and what they're doing with Thundercats War and all that, you know, pushing their political agenda or whatever. 
And as I said, some people like that, and that's a matter of opinion. But for me, I think it just hurts. It just hurts me to see this medium that I love so much being limited in such a way in a world where the limit, where where even where there there's even less limits with what you can do because because this 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 mat, mat, tools that we have are better than what we had before. Like right. I said, like I'm right. doing this movie in my on on my own, creating like a, a multi million dollar looking movie from the 90s on my own in my studio yeah just one, one man band now if you can do that with one person and create that kind of aesthetic imagine what a team of people could do yeah imagine what a team of people could do so it's a beautiful time and i always tell people like don't be a do don't be a watcher be a doer because if you're a watcher you're just you're just depending on the content yeah fine they're depending on people like jake they're depending on people like chris and people like me uh, and yourself to create content. That's mm -hmm. good. We, we need people to depend on us to create content. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think the people who are wanting to be content creators need to be less consumers and more, more uh, just people who are just creating and doing. And therefore, they're not dependent on worrying about so much about like, I, I, can't believe how much time I used to waste as a full-grown adult worrying about what Disney were making. Mm. You know, <laughs> give the yeah, shit. Sure. Like, I mean, the, 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 for me, like they've drawn the line now. Like, uh, the, the company's virtually dead for me with all these remakes. But like, even if, even if it, even so, what? Who gives a shit, good or bad? Like, I'm too busy making my own stuff now. And I'm glad you said that, um, because. Uh, there's just no great, greater time to be alive and to be an artist. Like this is the literally the coolest time. Um, you have access to and exactly what you were saying. Uh, you're doing your own film. Um, couldn't really do that by yourself before nope. today, you know, so, um, so yeah, like, and 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 you have distribution. All you have to do is get your Instagram up just a little bit and start working on YouTube videos and put it out there. And there's your audience. All you have to do is exactly what you said: keep creating. You're going to find your audience. If people that dress up like furries can find themselves, you're going to be able to find. <laughs> your audience <laughs> well you know what carlos this is what i also tell a lot of people because since i started uh learning business myself i realized that this just doesn't apply to business like a lot of artists have this scarcity mentality maybe they've been conditioned that way it's part it's partly there it's partly th not their fault but i always like to say the onus always lies back on the person mm -hmm. but it's like oh you know but they don't want to spend money they don't want to spend money even on courses they don't want to spend money on equipment. Mm. They don't want to spend money on anything. So then they 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 all the time take 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 take. Oh YouTube, I can post my work for free. But then when they don't get any views, it's the algorithm man. Yeah, it's the yeah. algorithm. Yeah. Nobody views the bastards. You know they're in it. They 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 just they're in it for the money man. And then they moan about Facebook and they moan about all these things. And I'm basically like I've said like okay, well, how much do you believe in what you're doing? Because if you're like you go and you 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 jack off to Star Wars or whatever it is. I don't care. Like you jack off so much to it that you spend God knows how much on the cinema tickets and the DVD and the conventions and all that. Imagine if you spent that on promoting your own work. Imagine if you ran a few Facebook ad campaigns of your own work. If you so believe in your characters, if you so believe in what you're doing, I've done Facebook ads. Look, there's a the time I spent a grand a day on Facebook ads because I believe in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I test. I test how much will I spend? How much will I spend? I know I'll make it all back. The thing is, is because I believe in what I'm doing. If you, if the same is for everybody else, if they're making a, uh, if they're making a show, they need to do some R and D. Right. Part of that R and D right. spending on it. What do people like? Do they like this character? Don't they like this character? Do they like this short little thing? The Simon, there's this guy uh, who makes these shorts called Simon's Cat. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah. I don't really, you know, not my thing, but I've got a lot of respect for the guy because he he markets himself and he's turned himself into a business. He was an animator in England in a studio called Tandem Films, and he just made this own little thing on the side, and now that's his big boy. That's his big thing. And it's like people love cats. People love to look at cats. He, he hit on something good there, and he found his market, and, you know, he created something there. And now, like, you you can't just speak all the time just be relying on the free promotion out there. You know, you got to, you got, if you have a vision as, a, as an artist, I, this is another thing which I'm going to start introducing. I'm not doing it at the moment, but once I feel that I can talk about it, although I'm getting more and more successful, I don't feel I have the right to talk. I only, the kind of person who feels you have only the right to talk about something when you've done it exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. I think I'm an exceptionally good animation instructor, but I've still only got 55,000 YouTube followers. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. Once I've got a certain standard and I've achieved a certain thing, I'm going to start making entrepreneurship courses for Oh, wow. Because, wow. because if, if I can just make, within three years, knowing nothing about business, I was frightened to death of business. Like, basically, like a, an 18-year-old or a 16 year old who studied a bit of economics would have known more about business than me as a, <laughs> as a, as a 40 or a 39 year old. Well, I was that bad at it. Mm. But if I can now be doing this, what I'm, what I'm doing, um, <clears throat> I feel that people out there are going to be able to, it's, it ain't that hard. It ain't that hard. It's a mindset thing. And I think part okay. of being a content okay. creator is, is you have to understand how to communicate with, uh, with with people and how to have faith in what you're doing and put it out there. Everybody can have an opinion. They're the cheapest thing on this earth. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, back it up. What are you going to back it up with? You know? Right. right. Let's talk about um, your film a little bit. How much of that can we get into? Because... We already touched. We already touched on it just a little bit earlier. We have a, a personified rabbit uh, that does kung fu. Um, oh, he does taekwondo. Or yeah, sorry, oh, taekwondo. I turned it into hopskido. It's called hopskido. His art. Hopskido. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. So, wow. how much of the storyline can we get you to tell us? Well, I, I don't mind disclosing a lot of it. The thing is, is that that is something that it, I don't see happening for a long while because I'm I'm focusing on the training. Mm -hmm. What it, the goal is, is I want to build my training library members, get a small little Red Riding Hood thing that I'm doing made. I'm making a trying to make a like five minutes of it on my own mm -hmm. and then get some funding for it and then actually hire some real animated training library students to say, look, we've trained these people and then we give them jobs. I've actually hired a few of my students to do to clean up some of my work, um, but the so the little red is going to be uh, is something I'm kind of like doing a Disney esque. Imagine Ridley Scott's Legend um, as a Disney film. That's what I'm kind of thinking with the the Little Red Riding Hood thing, and I'm trying to get five. I've written a small poem um, which I'm going to do for the trailer, so it starts all kind of sweet and like a Disney cartoon with opening the book and the girl dancing in the woods, much like legend, but nice. then it'll get, more, it'll get more sinister and more darker um, towards the end. And that'll give people a flavor for it. So uh, if I can even, I might even, you know, try to fund it as a, as a crowd funder because, because of the nature of the material being more dark, um, I'm not sure whether any of the mainstream people will pick it up, but I've got all these ideas, you know, I even think that if, if you did it right, you could even raise money through running ad campaigns. If you made such a such a badass trailer that people go, I want to see that, they'll just they'll just. Uh, what I do is I watch a lot of other industries. I watch a lot of. Um, th there's this guy uh, who's really exploiting the COVID nineteen at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, he's a guy called Brian Rose who does this London Real thing. Um, People have got their own opinions of him. I'm not going to really get into that. But he basically said, I'm going to run my own digital streaming platform. And people basically gave him money because they wanted to see him interview David Icke to talk about the, the conspiracy. So um, they wanted, all the conspiracy theorists wanted to sit down and listen to it. So he, he raised a million dollars for that. 
Wow. Wow. Yeah. So basically, I think to myself, well, if I make this trailer good enough, and I, I, I run a few ad campaigns just to put it in front of people, rather than relying on the algorithm, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, um, basically, then I'll see. It. Then I'll know if if people don't want to see it, they don't want to see it. But if I can raise some money that way, then that would be great. And then the so that's like my test run for doing the Groundhopper, which is more like a series. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be like. It's going to be like, a, uh, I love the 70s show Kung Fu Yeah. Uh, with, with David Carradine. Now, the martial mm -hmm. arts was absolute shit, but that's not the reason. <laughs> I, the, reason I li the reason I liked the show was, um, was because of the philosophy and the storytelling. Right. And I want to get back into that. I want to get back into not just i don't want to just focus on young men i just human beings i want them to understand i want them to watch something with value sincerity um the kind of cartoons i grew up on like shows like the legend of prince valiant awful animation awful awful animation but very unique in the writing very unique in the storytelling in terms of um it was very sort of more like a live action drama mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I want to get into that with the stories. I want them to be like the kind of morals that you'd see watching Rawhide or The Fugitive, those 1950s or 60s shows with this one character like Dr. Richard Kimball going on his way and helping people and, and that kind of thing. And just really, but then mix it up with the kind of really, because I really know my martial arts, I really want to throw in some. We're talking like the kind of scenes you'll have in there is like the tiger, this tiger who's like, imagine Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bruce Lee, like, so you've got this. Uh, he picks the rabbit up by his ear and he holds him there and the rabbit's ear has got a tear in it and it looks like its ear is going to come off. It's that kind of cartoon. Then you suddenly have the flashback of the rabbit as a young kid with his master tying him with one ear. That's how he got the tear and he had to hang there for three days. So he did not feel pain in his ear when he was being hanged there. So mm -hmm. he's not feeling pain when this tiger is pulling him by the ear. And it's going to have that kind of stuff. The fighting is going to be pretty, pretty brutal. So like the kind of choreography, you have the tiger drop to his knee. You have the rabbit drop to his knee, punch the inside knee of the tiger because the tiger is just too big. The tiger will buckle. Then he'll roll underneath his legs and kick him in the balls jump on his back and elbow him in the spine. And it's all going to be done with that super cool kind of who can, who can kind of, like um, to really, you know, really big it up. It's a, I like anime, actually. I like the, because a lot of it is based on Akira Kurosawa kind of Chambara fighting timing. And mm -hmm. I'm a huge Sergio Leone fan. And Sergio Leone was about no movement. And the build-up to the movement, like, and then the people standing there and all work, walking in a circle. So basically, my the Rabbit Project will be this amazing story, but with not as much fighting as you think, but it'll be like a sur mini Sergio Leone where when the fight happens, there'll be this beautiful build-up to it with mm. like this uh, big, big music. But also, I'm going to throw in rock, like, um, I, I don't like the way that rock is not considered cool anymore. When I was in the 80s, mm -hmm. you had Thundercats and uh, Transformers. <laughs> yeah. that kind of hard I don't think there's any... I'm not going to put it in a box and call it macho rock or this and that. For me, that's the expression. I want it to have that expression. I want it... Mm -hmm. Why can't it have pan pipes and be all oriental one minute and then have badass rock music the next minute? Because mm -hmm. it's... That's how I want it to communicate to all these different levels of people. Yeah. And it's just basically going to be the, that kind of show, uh, which is heavy on um, m heavy on morals. Uh, now, one could say, but what are your morals? Well, <laughs> let me just say, pretty old-fashioned, I guess. Yeah. It's just going to be that, and it's going to be um, based on a lot of, I guess, Zen philosophy, in that way. I'm not a Zen Buddhist, but I, I just like it. I think it's a great way of telling stories through metaphors and mm -hmm. things like that. And um, I just think uh, 
I've had to change the design of the rabbit. The thing you see at the back, he's turned into a hare, not mm. a rabbit, actually. Because mm. I originally wanted to create a mascot. I don't know if you've seen on my demo reel on my site, there's this rabbit doing these kicks, like all mm. these flashy. I wanted to create a mascot for AMB animation. So I said, let's go back to the old Mickey Mouse. So I created this Mickey Mouse, this kind of rabbit. And I did this little bit of fighting in the Redwood Forest. Mm -hmm. So I fought. I combined it with that to see if that character could do more real martial arts moves. And while I liked it, I, I kind of like was thinking of this story in my mind and I was saying the design's got to change. So he was getting more and more graphic, more and more blues like more and more like. So I, I lean for sort of like 70% um, blues and 30% anime in, in, mm -hmm. in, in the... Mm -hmm. and, and so you'll see sort of very anime-inspired pose in, in the way he's standing mm -hmm. and his shape. I love the I love anime video game designs more than animation designs. So I love the guy in the Street Fighter Alpha series. I love that kind of thin waist and those. So it's like he's going to be like kind of like guy mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that kind of He's thing like with the so oversized hands. Yeah. So, so so there's a subconscious when you design these kind of shows. As a character designer, you need to hit people's subconscious with the silhouette of the character. So, uh, as I as I thought about the design, I want to I want to immediately people look at the character and go, that looks a bit Disney. But at the same time, I'm getting this cool vibe from it that I don't get from Disney. Mm. You know, so so the so the people that are maybe into the into the more anime are going to be a little bit more open to it. That's nice. I like that. So that's basically where I'm at with that. <laughs> that's it's awesome. Great. I'm trying to catch up to there's there's uh, it's a little the bit. chat room has been on fire. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard to hard to read and keep up. <laughs> isn't really steampunk. I know uh, I know all of them. I'm not sure about Jean. But um, Jean Luc Jean Luc is an old friend of ours. He's a he's a, he's a regular. Yeah. Uh, Hello Jean Luc. Nice uh, to meet you. Cool name, by the way. Although I, I must admit, like uh, Captain James Tiberius was mine. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Have you been finding um, that that the online teaching and stuff um, has it been rewarding for you? Do oh you, man! Do you genuinely like doing that? <laughs> I tell you what. Even when I used to teach martial arts, I used to get a kick out of like, I used to get a kick out of helping people get get fitter. I used to get a kick out of, like, I remember this one time, this guy, I'm sorry, to, I, I do go on a bit, but I, I just think, yeah, like, right. this, this guy came up to me and he one day said to me, I, I'm really scared of hitting people in the face and I'm being bullied all the time. <laughs> so I, I, said to, I said to him, do you trust me? He said, yeah. I do trust you. I said, let's have a little bit of a sparring match. So this guy, by the way, um, was like twice my size. Well, not he's a good head and shoulders above me, and he lifted weights, but he was a gentle giant. Mm -hmm. And I All think right. people were taking advantage of him. And I basically said, so I knew I could do this with him. I wouldn't do it to some girl or some other little kid. Okay. So I started sparring him, and I started whacking him quite hard, and I started slapping him in the face like that. In the end, he kind of grabbed me against the wall and went <laughs> against the wall like that. And like I really like, he started like, and he held himself, and I went, "Now I'm your ring." I said, "Now you're ready. Nobody's going to take advantage of you ever again." Yeah. And that, I went home feeling great. I went home feeling great, and so I've always loved that. And the thing is, is when I started helping these guys teaching the online, I'm going to be very honest. When I'm start, when I first started my business, it would be a very big lie if I wasn't worried about am I getting enough members. Sure. You know, I quit my job. My wife backed me up, but wasn't happy. <laughs> you know, um, why are you turning down that Lego series? Why are you turning down that? Why are you? Why don't you just take that? Just take that. We need them. You know. I'm like, no. Um, so it was hard to really understand what I was doing when I was in that phase. I was like, I need members. 
I need members, I need members. But once I kind of, once you kind of like got over that, it's like, you're like, okay, I've got a few members now. Um, now they don't have to talk to me. They bought my product, that's mm -hmm. it. Um, but then I said, you know what? Um, I need to find another way to to expand my income. So I created this thing called the Inner Circle on Facebook. Mm. And the Inner Circle completely transformed and 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 gave me an eye because these people were just buying my my uh, products, but I couldn't speak to them. I didn't know what they were doing. It was like they'd gone to a shop, they bought something, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, the Inner Circle, I said, for a little bit more. I'll look at your work once a week, okay? And then I started having these these people, like Akal said, 50 people came in, um, and I started forming a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And even though I was losing out, like I'm not making money out of it, but I'm like, let's help them today. Let's. So it ended up being more than once a week, once a week. It ended up being twice a week, or thrice a week, or whenever anybody posted, oh, I've got to go live and help him. And I started really enjoying it. Mm. And then and then I started getting more and more library members gradually like over. And the library members don't need, I don't, there's no, like I make it clear to them, look, you're getting education that industry professionals pay for, people who are in the industry, people who've been to CalArts, people who've paid basically $180,000 for their degree are still coming to me to learn. So feedback is not guaranteed. Mm. That's not part of the deal. But at the same time, I love it. So I've opened this free Facebook group that you don't have to be a library member where everybody can join and post their tests, if they're library or not library. If you look like somebody who's really trying, I will give you my time. And like, I tell you what, when I look at the, I, I, I had faith that my teaching methods were great, but I'll be honest with you, I surprised myself. The speed these guys are getting good at, I can't believe it. Wow. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, am I really that good? You know, all of a sudden, like, am I really that good? Have I really done that? You Have know? I finally found my passion? These these guys are like doing so well. Like all of them, I can name them. Like So Jong An, Swan Animation, Life Fan Life Fantasy. Wow, uh, Thrilled Mayfly. Um, I should say wow well for all of them, really, because they're all pitch a cat. They're all basically all of these guys know what halves are. They know what thirds are. You know, I've got 15 year old boys that know what halves and thirds are. Take that animation graduates. You know, <laughs> they know what halves and thirds are. They know how to time on halves and thirds. They're like, you know, they know all about the 12 laws, like the basics archive. You focus, I, I break it down because the way the illusion of life teaches it, it it was written by animators for animators as a sort of general coffee table overview book. So there's no order. They start with squash and stretch. Well, how do you know how to time squash and stretch? How do you know if you should slow into the squash or slow, slow out into the... What about if we come down on halves on that stretch to slow in and then pop up on thirds, you know? Mm. So I say basically like, okay, let's have the six laws of movement and the six laws of life. So the six laws of movement would be like the basics where they'd learn about arcing, timing, slowing in and slowing out, you know, um, pose to pose and straight ahead, you know, because that's like, uh, is it going to be, um, should I, what's the best way to work out the timing of this, you know? Um, then you go into the laws of life, which is going to be, you know, also a little bit of squash and stretch in the laws of movement because you don't have to be alive for that. So then you've got anticipation. You've got primary and secondary action. Arguably follow through and drag would go in the other one. Um, then you've got follow through and overlapping action. You've got staging. You've got exaggeration. You've got appeal. You've got all of these going into the other six laws, which you go on and do in the intermediate. So by breaking it down that way, I've made these people go. It's like it's like going through. We're going to learn how to do a front kick. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to learn how to do a side kick. Then we're going to learn how to do a back kick. Then we're going to learn how to do a round kick. And now 
you can combine them all and do all these flashy yes. kicks, like a jumping front, a jumping back. You're going to do 100 press-ups on your knuckles. Then you're going to be able to punch through a, a, a tile. Then you're going to be, you know, strengthen. So that kind of mentality goes into you're going to do a bouncing ball. That bouncing ball is going to teach you about timing. You've got 25 frames, which is 24 frames, which is one second. You're going to learn how to break that up and you're going to learn how to make the ball move slow and fast within that time. That's the law of timing and the law of slowing in and slowing out. So I make sure that the from the get go, even in the first month, these guys understand that. And once they understand those three fundamental laws, the other laws less rest upon that. Mm -hmm. uh, like basically squash and stretch rests on timing. It rests on arcing. Mm -hmm. You know, if 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 if, if, he, if he's gonna go down like this and he's gonna he's gonna squash and he's gonna come up, look at the arc. He's gonna go down like that and up there. So it's a, it's resting on the arc, then the timing and all of that. So all of those three foundational laws. And that's what I think where it, it all happens. That's when I think why these guys are getting it is their drawing is now having to catch up with their animation. I think if these guys mm. were given a computer program and told to move something around um, with a rig or a, uh, and they knew how to use the software, they would create some pretty special animation. Mm. So then I say drawing is something that's going to take time. Just like building a nice six-pack abs, and you gotta eat right, you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta do the cardio, but you gotta do the strength, you know, and you gotta be regular, you gotta be disciplined. So I designed this anatomy archive, where you gotta do every bone of the body, every bone, even if you're doing like the the pisiform, the hamate, the lunate, the scaphoid, all the different corpals. I don't care if you don't need to know. You're going to know because you're going to draw. Do you know why? Because while you're drawing it, you're creating your hand-eye coordination and you're developing those motor skills with the pen to be able to draw. And any excuse to draw is a good excuse and you might as well kill anatomy with it at the same time because a lot of people don't want to learn anatomy and that's a great way to learn anatomy and get good at drawing at the same time. So that's how that works. And with people like, Kitchikat, who I was telling you earlier, I gave the free membership to because I was just wowed. Mm -hmm. um, her drawing skill, she came online with this really simplistic drawing skill. She's still got a long way to go, but now even people in the group are like, wow. Like, hmm. she's like yeah. doing full on shading and everything. And it's nice. like, it's like, that's that's not real. I'm like, I'm looking at that going, what's that? What's that? <laughs> it's just like, yeah. so do I get a kick out of it? Hopefully with my, the way I've been talking about it. Yeah, I get a yeah. kick out of seeing them getting good. It's just such a, and hiring them. I've hired like, oh, cool. the first guy to finish two of my articles, the first guy who finished the basic library courses, uh, a guy called Aaron AOX. There's a scene where I animate this character saying it's like for the marketing purposes, but I did a dialogue course where she says, are you going to join the library? You might have seen it on my site or whatever. I've got this animation and it's left in rough tie down animation. And it was like that for maybe two years. It was one of the first courses I did uh, on uh, for the library. And then I said, you know what? I can't be bothered to clean this up. Why don't I make and I document it on YouTube so the audience can see. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm hiring him to do a, um, I pay him not bad money for it, and I, I hire him to do the cleanup of that dialogue scene, mm -hmm. but then he, he shows it to me and we do live critiquing, so I'm giving him professional, so they're seeing what it would be like to have the Disney quality cleanup line. You're not just doing a tracing of a drawing. You're really having to look at the extremes. You're looking at to have to look at the deformation because a cleanup drawing will kill. If not done properly, it'll kill. A, uh, people don't understand. They just think it's just tracing. And I'm saying so it took him a long time, longer than usual. But like, I love that because now that guy's got a skill that I know that most people in the animation industry today do not have because it, mm. nobody cleans up anymore. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing just gone. 
and a lot of a lot of indie traditional guys are cleaning up their own work. So um, that gave me a kick as well, being able to just hire these guys um, to like even though I animated this real animator training logo. Um, uh, I hired one of my students who's a motion graphics artist. And I said, look, you're going to use motion graphics, but I'm going to direct you. And I turned it into a live commission where the audience could see how I directed it, how I thumbnailed it for him and how I told him how to do it. So I, while they're getting a job, part of the deal is, is your job is going to be live so my audience can see and understand what it's like to get to, to be directed well mm -hmm. or to give good direction. Because in this right. day and age, with a lot of independent artists, I feel they're getting abused by a lot of clients who who just don't understand animation and don't understand the pipeline and they just basically want these guys to um, turn stuff out for them unrealistically and they don't really brief them. They don't brief them. I mean, yeah. they the direct how to brief somebody. Yeah. You've got to be clear with them what they, uh, what they want. You've got to be absolutely clear with them about what your angle is and what you're looking for. Um, you can't just lead, tell them vaguely something and then they put their heart and soul into it and come back and you go, no, that, uh, that's not my angle. I'll maybe give it a bit more. I was thinking of something. A bit <laughs> <laughs> Classic client. Oh, I, yeah, I'm, I just... Uh, was it today or yesterday started conversations with someone who needs some animation done and, and fast and cheap. And I was like, Oh, here we go. Yeah. Fast and cheap. Yeah. I, the, the, the funny thing is, is like, I take it as a compliment, but whenever I get a, a, a message in my Instagram or my YouTube or whatever, do you do commissions? I don't reply it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I just I just know that I, with all due respect to them, they won't be able to afford me. No. I mean, I, I turned down industry gigs, so I'm not going to, you know, it's like that's I'm true. not going to. Like, yeah. yeah, that's true. And go ahead. On the other hand, if I do get messages from people like it's my husband's birthday or whatever, if I'm in a good mood, I'll say I'll do it for free. Yeah, mm. and then and. That's been my approach ever since uh, I started trying to grow my YouTube audience is uh, if someone comes to me and their budget is very low, my very next thing is I will help you, but can I stream it or can I create content for YouTube to show other people how to do this? I'll work with you if you work with me, but yeah, don't go thinking that I'm going to put in three months worth of work and you're going to give me $500. It's not going to work that, that way. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot of money, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the reason why I said that is the sad thing is, is when uh, people who've never been paid, I tell my uh, students this all the time. Look, a lot of people just want the satisfaction of being paid for their art. They want, they're looking for validity. Mm -hmm. they're looking for validity so they'll work for five dollars and when somebody yeah. says 500 bucks they think 500 bucks but they don't know what they're getting themselves in for right 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 <laughs> they don't know how long it's gonna take and you know they're not making anything yeah yeah i don't know how much everyone's electricity bill is these days but in three months you can probably especially in the dead of summer running your air conditioning and all the i mean if you look at all the screens i have turned on right, right. Now, yeah you yeah. can burn through, you can literally burn through $500 in three months only on electricity. So think about that. You know, um, if you want validation on anything, do an animation, put it on Instagram and collect the hearts. You know? Yeah, but the algorithm, man, the algorithm. algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> They're all against me. Yeah. Infamy, infamy. They all got the infamy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are at uh, two hours and 20 minutes. Uh, Jack, wow. Charlie, do we have any more questions? I'm looking. I mean, we're going to have to have now. you back. There's yeah. plenty to talk about. There's a lot of stuff there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, this has been great. Okay. 
cool. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and bring this guy in for a landing. Uh, legendary animation instructor and director. If people are looking for you online, where can they find you? And oh, and and be sure to let us know that your Facebook group too. This one that you were just oh. talking about. Well, they can find me at Carlos Coconut Justice. Uh, <laughs> <Catch> <laughs> <Anime. laughs> you know, We're twinning and, uh, right now. <laughs> and uh, Chris Williams. Uh, I hope I said that right. It is Chris Williams, isn't it? Charlie. 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 Well, there you go. Yeah, I, I said it wrong. There you go. I knew I'd get my foot in my mouth. There. <laughs> uh, it's all good. And uh, I'm not going to go for his surname. Then I'm just going to say Jake. Jack. <laughs> Jack. Oh well, there you go. Messed up. <laughs> it started so it started it started off so well, a bit of mutual promotion, and that guy that guy didn't even remember my name. <laughs> you remember mine? I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you're coconut. You're you're coconut justice. I mean, I I, I wish I, I had that. You know, um, where did that name come from? It's so cool. Um. The short story is it's a gamer name, uh, gamer, gamer tag. Well, I thought it was like there's this woman who had the most amazing breasts and she used like a coconut to put them on there and she did justice to the coconut. You know? <laughs> Basically, like, <laughs> that's, that's what that's what I, you know, that, 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 that's the way my foul little mind works. <laughs> it's not a bad but, answer. Yeah. <laughs> I want to animate that, you see. You're just giving me, you're making me want to animate an intro for you, but, you know, I've got to do something that gets my juices flowing. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> but, no, I can, um, I can, uh, you can find me on ambanimation.com, um, which is my website. Uh, there's a lot of free, my free YouTube tutorials are, are on there and my animation breakdowns of classic uh uh, Disney scenes like from Sword in the Stone. I've got a six-hour animation breakdown, nine hours possibly, I think. Nine hours I break down that scene through three different live streams. Uh, uh, so you can watch a lot of great free content on my uh, website in Real Animator Free View um, on ambanimation.com. So it's not just a place for you to give me money. Um, there's also uh, Facebook. I have the Facebook fan page, AMB Animation, but they're more what people are going to like is um, the free for all Facebook group, which is Real Animator Growth, Development and Progress. It's a place where library members uh, and non-library members alike, it's open to everyone. Now, what makes it special is that you get nine free videos you don't have to give me an email address or anything. You get nine free videos from the Real Animator Training Library from various archives in there to watch and study. Some people have said that that alone taught them more than their degree. So you get that free. Uh, and what's even cooler than that is, is you're basically part of a peer group of really great animators, like up-and-coming animators, people like the people in the chat now whose work is like, you look at live fantasy from Mayfly, Swanimation, So Jong An, just to name a few, Akau the Warrior, their work, they really know their stuff now. They can help you. So if you're, if you're trying to learn animation and you don't want to spend any money and you just want to pick people's brains, then you can use that group for that as well. You know, you don't have to, it's not, you, there's no catch in there. You know, the only thing is if you want to try the library before you buy, there's some of the free videos there, but you, you know, if you just want to hang out with a great peer group of people who actually know how to animate hmm. and are doing it themselves, then go join that group. And then there's, of course, AMB Animation Academy on YouTube, which is uh, my YouTube. And that's Instagram, um, TikTok I dabbled with, but uh, not for me, really. Yeah, <laughs> that one <laughs> nice. still. Yeah. Hey, Charlie, if people are looking for you online, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me in a couple of different places. You can find me at cargocollective.com slash Charlie B. Williams. It's my website. Portfolio, all the good stuff is up there. You can find me on Instagram at uh, CharlieBW3. You can find me on Twitter, CBW3. You can also check out that almighty Pinterest 
get some reference and all the other good information. I started putting other links and stuff up there too for other other uh, videos and tutorials of, of different things that I find in reference and stuff. It's good. It's a great reference site. Pinterest.com slash CharlieBW3. There's something for everyone there. Get in your life. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Oh, and what I was saying, Rashad, is uh, I downloaded TikTok and I got the name Coconut Justice and then I tried for a couple weeks. Yeah. And then I decided that's it. I, I can't. It's best to focus. I I actually think it's gonna blow and destroy. The way it's going, it's gonna like destroy everything. But I, it's just too unusual for me. Yeah. It doesn't suit my. It doesn't suit my what I'm doing. Like, I mean, at first I joined it and I followed my daughter, which was a bad idea, because all I got in my stream was a load of dancing teenage girls, and I thought, what the hell am I watching some jail? <laughs> actually, I felt really uncomfortable. Like, because it's not, you know, basically because I followed my daughter. Who's a, and, and I said, I said to my wife, this TikTok is like really suspect. I don't know why people are like, and then she said, no, you got to follow the right people. So then I realized, oh, there's a lot of martial artists on TikTok. So mm -hmm. I started following like martial artists and there's Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. and all these fitness dudes. Uh, there's not many artists on there. So now my TikTok thankfully has like I've realized that it's for everyone. It's not some weird kind of creepy place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure. Thinking, what the hell is this? Uh, you know, uh, but uh, I, I don't see many artists on TikTok <clears throat> at the moment. Um, I think we're uh, all still. I think we're all still stuck in uh, on Instagram. Yeah, it's like, but uh, those, I thought, it's those habits are hard to break. The, 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 one of the one of the sort of entrepreneur entrepreneur people I listen to he's a, you know he I can see why a lot of people don't like him but I think he does talk a lot of sense and what he says does actually happen is a guy called Gary Vaynerchuk Gary Vaynerchuk is amazing Gary, yeah. if you don't Gary follow v. me or listen to what I'm saying then fuck you <laughs> basically like, you know basically like um but he is basically he was all for Instagram and Facebook ads and, and yeah. way before they became big. Everybody. And now he's saying TikTok is the one. He's saying TikTok is the one. And like I don't one. I don't see it, but if he says it, then I'm gonna put some I'm gonna put some uh value in there, but like uh, at the moment it's not for me. It's a little mm -hmm. bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jack, if people are looking for you online, where can they find you? Um, Sketchbook Jack on social media platforms, mainly Instagram. Excellent. I'm going to follow Jack on Instagram then. I think <laughs> you've just got two videos on your YouTube, I think. I had, a, I remember having I've a look. I've got a bunch of nothing on my YouTube. There's, uh, there's two videos on there, and I, and I went to your website, and it said, Hello World. <laughs> I, 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 I built my WordPress website myself because I got cheated. Like, I when I was building the real animated training, I paid a guy and he took three and a half grand from me and didn't do anything. Um, uh, so I ended up learning WordPress myself and building it all myself. And in a way, yeah. it's good. But then I looked I, at your uh, site and said, he hasn't got out of the hello world bit yet. <laughs> It was there for years and le yeah, yeah and long story. Yeah, I'm actually in the process of rebuilding and putting up something new. Well, I look forward. I'll I'll keep an eye on it. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll keep know. Talking Go to his Instagram. His Instagram is. I'm gonna stalk. I'm like like Carlos. Stalk. I'm gonna stalk him and see who he, he when and like when he changes it. I'm gonna say, hey, he changes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, and I guess, uh, saving the best for last, uh, coconutjustice.com, coconut justice everywhere else. Uh, and if you're watching us here on YouTube, do me a favor and, uh, head on over to youtube.com slash coconut justice and take a look at what, I, what I'm doing over there. Uh, I think you'd like it. Um, sketch zone. 
obviously we're on YouTube. Come and hang out with us. We try to be here every Thursday night. We went a little bit early this uh, this week. Uh, yep. We went two hours early because Ashad is in London, in the London area. Far currently. away. It's 5.30 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> oh, man, we got to let you get to bed. <laughs> yeah. I've just had too much fun. It's like a late night drink. I've never, I don't drink, but I guess this is what a late night going drinking with the boys is like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Usually we hear this is what it feels like to get hit in my head for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm used to that. <laughs> but no, you see what we like to do. We like to include the uh, the audience in the conversation. So thank you, Akau, uh, Swanimation, Every- Dylan Draws, Life Fantasy X, uh, So Jung on frilled mayfly frilled it was a it was an absolute pleasure for me to read some of the 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 comments that you were you were really like going in um cape two yeah i just gotta go ahead sorry i just gotta thank them too because they all just probably came to give me some moral support they're all my crowd so (laughs) thanks which is phenomenal and this is this is specifically why we do this right because um there's things that you're doing on your channel and you kind of want to stay on brand. And so you can come here and just geek out with us for a couple hours and people really get to know you and who you are and what you're trying to do. Uh, and then if we can push, you know, anyone in your direction, obviously that's, that's what we're here for. Um, and this is episode 200 and what did I say? Five, five. So yeah, uh no 206 so that means we oh, have you mean you don't know you don't know how many episodes you've done <laughs> <laughs> i really want to do a story and just have you do some of the voices like it would be <laughs> it would be hilarious <laughs> um so yeah we have 205 so that means that you have until next week to watch them all um oh, get on it and yeah, we've talked to a lot of really cool people. Obviously, uh, Arshad, uh, we've talked to like uh, Travis Blaze. We've talked to um, so many. Who else have we? I don't know. I'm, I'm, a lot. Uh, <laughs> Josh Tabak. I've got to give the man Josh Tabak. We got we got Josh Tabak in here. Uh, he, did, he directed. He worked on Simpsons. Uh, you know, you he, know directed, he directed. He uh, directed. He's directing Spirit. Uh, the TV show. Yeah, I know a guy that's, that's how I know Josh. That. He's a seasoned <laughs> guy. guy. The thing is, is I, I'm, I have mixed feelings about that because I love the original movie, but this, you know, without dragging the stream on a bit, this took, this shows about the state of the industry. Like, it's <laughs> like I can't like I love the original movie of Spirit, and if I was honestly asked to give a view of the TV show, I'd be like, well, it's a CG, you know, they they did this. But there's great people like Josh working on that, directing that. You know, they they need work. They got to be doing work. They got to, you know, you got to you got to keep, you know, it's just the way you got to go with what the industry is doing. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the way it is. I mean, it's a great it's a great show. He makes the best out of it that he can. Yeah. Yeah. So we have all those guys out there. Um... And again, thank you, Ashad, for number one for for sharing your knowledge. Um, I'm I'm always a big fan. I'm a big fan of education. I'm a big fan of teachers, um, and always pushing the the learning agenda. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely. If you have not checked his channel out, do that. Uh, Octavio, don't you make me blush. Uh, (laughs) is always kind out there yeah um yeah so please uh we have we have um all the links in the description of this video please check him out um support him as much as you can go on instagram and follow him and do all that good stuff and uh yeah whoop whoop for teachers um i think that's it for me uh, I think we're good. I think that's it for all of us. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been an absolute, it's been an absolute pleasure to sit here with you, fine American gentlemen. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's as though we were all in the same room together. I very much appreciated it. 
And now fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we're out. You guys have a wonderful Just week. Just joking, guys. Yeah. You guys. <laughs> no, I think everyone knew that was a joke. Okay. Everyone take sometimes care. We'll see I you. Go, sometimes I go too far. <laughs> that, that's my nickname. My nickname is Carlos <laughs> Too Far Gomez. Like, anyway. All right, you guys have a good week. Doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs>